This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Are we live now, Mom? I, I think we're live. Oh my god. Yo, can you send out the notification? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can send the notification out, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just opening things, oh trying to put on god. this hat. Oh, bro. Oh my god. Lawrence. What? You're serious right now, bro? Take Dude. off your Tesla battery. Oh. You got the Elon Musk <laughs> off the table. Again. Bro, are you serious, Lawrence? Oh, bro. Why are you guys always complaining about stuff? <laughs> 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 yo, yo any, anyway, yo, there's obviously a lot going on right now, and I didn't even know the show opened, but it's here. All right, so uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Larry. Lawrence. Lido. Seth. And this is that One Piece Talk, where we talk One Piece. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that is currently tuned in to watching us turn up, you feel me? Thank you for being here. Guys, it is episode 100. Holy moly, don't shop. <laughs> we are here at episode 100. Did you guys want to say anything for episode 100? And we'll start with Lawrence, because he's the most inconvenient person here. I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I second that. No, <laughs> but now it's, um we we reached a hundred. That's an awesome achievement for us. Like you know, we've been and it's been a hundred, but we've only been doing it for less than two years. You know, yeah. it's been a year and a few months, and I'm glad that we could able to do it. We did the journey with our, well, you know, with us, our brothers, and with you, Nakama. You know, it's pretty. What about awesome. you, Sub? Uh, yeah, I just gotta echo Lawrence's sentiments, man. It's it's been a great ride. It's been a lot of fun so far. Like Lawrence said, it's only been not even full two years. We're coming up on two years in a little bit, but you know, I I, I didn't even realize we had did so many episodes. Like I remember <laughs> when we started getting to like the '90s, I was like, oh, holy crap! Like we're about to reach a hundred. So the fact that we're here right now um, and we we're able to do this with the bros is just it's awesome. So glad to be here. Glad that we got the whole gang here too. You know what I'm saying? Gang, gang. Like, Lionel, like, like, just graduated just so he could be here. Woo! Yeah! Like, Lionel! Shout out to that, man. Shout out to something uh -huh. That's how you like it. Uh -huh. Even though he said he ain't love me, bro. Oh, oh my told, gosh. I told Lionel I, I, so I loved him. I loved him the other day. And he said, all right, later, bro. I hung up. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I, I was told you. Oh. I text you, bro. I was I, emotionally stop. and physically scarred, bro. But... We're here. Be a better brother, bro. Bro, I text him because I didn't know what he said. I even told Lord, so I thought he out said of later. For that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Way out of pocket. <laughs> he was like, "Hey, yo, man." He, nah. he hit on Lawrence. He was like, "Yo, Sebastian being mad sus, yo." <laughs> I don't know what that was, oh, but man. we need to talk to him. <laughs> and Lawrence is like, "I ain't trying to do that." <laughs> Uh, Lionel, what about you, man? Oh, what do you want to say? You're barely here, like Lauren said. <laughs> oh my God! <goodness. laughs> I know you're saying that. Like, I feel awkward saying, "Yo, I'm not as here as much." Like the hundred milestone of this episodes. Is like episode I fifty for Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> you're not saying. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so wow, so hundred. That's great. It don't feel like a hundred. <laughs> oh man, no, I'm really happy to be here with my brothers. You know, I love my brothers. Don't don't listen to Sebastian and other people. Listen, like you know, I'm listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> you. I said I love you. You said um, all right, bro. <laughs> I didn't hear you say that. I thought you said later, bro. Mm -hmm. And I text you later on. You didn't text me that night. I ain't get that, bro. Yes, you did. <laughs> Don't lie. I, I would show bro. you the text so right now. Some type of way. I, I, I ain't get that. What more do you <laughs> want from me? Smash was like, yeah, man. I ain't reciprocating that. Energy. No reciprocation, bro. <laughs> yeah. But nah, like, it's a, it's a great, um, it's great that we reached this far. Like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of upset I wasn't here all the time, but I'm glad I'm here now, and I'm trying to make sure I'm here most, um, more episodes 
So hopefully we could um, keep on going with this. And, like, again, it's a pleasure being with my brothers, talking about OP and with the Nakama, <laughs> with the community. So I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. yeah those are great things said, man. You know, I had this whole written out speech that I was going to talk about. But then I said, nah. <laughs> I really did. And it was because I kind of wanted to just be super organic with it. I didn't want something written. And I was like, damn. Like, like we're at episode 100. We, we've literally spent, you know, almost a good two years with Marv now and, you know, the Bravery Studios. And where we started was kind of crazy. And then where we're at right now is kind of crazy. And I just feel like no matter what we... We really haven't changed much. If anything, it's like we're still us, and yeah. I love that. And I know a lot of people are looking to, forward to us like doing something spectacular, like cosplaying. And unfortunately, we're not. Um, so I apologize for that. What you but, mean? I'm chopper, bro. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like, it's like, man, like, like I, I didn't want to cater to anybody i didn't want to bring on any special guests you know like par maj you know the, the people that we love you know but i really wanted to just sit back and just sit here and be normal and just be fans and feel like i'm still sitting on that couch in the attic watching like you guys go at it <laughs> <laughs> and i and i'm like yo i, I kind of just want to keep being a fan like i just want to keep being a fan of us and like you know you guys and like what you're capable of bringing to the table each and every episode and I was like, yo, if there's anything that, like, 100 means to me, it's like, yo, keeping it a stack, like, keeping it real. like, mm -hmm. And this is what we are. It's like, we're, we're literally what we've always described ourselves to be. And it's, like, the best of us and the best we could create. Like, like we're touching fans around the world now. And we continue to grow at a very, like, fast rate, faster than before. Mm -hmm. So it's like... Hard work does pay off, but also just being who you are pays off. So I'm personally happy to be here amongst my brothers. And for all you guys that are tuned in and watching us right now, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. You know, we touched 33,000 subscribers on hey, YouTube. Yo. We have 69,000 followers on TikTok. We have 1,200 followers on Twitter. We have 2,600 followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It it just goes to show like we're we're Himothy. And and that's it. Himothy? Yeah. It's like you're him, but like instead of Timothy, <laughs> you're Himothy. You ever heard of Himothy, bro? Nah. You you definitely not him then. <laughs> yeah. You're, don't say that, bro. No. Lawrence has a weird cult fan base you know, <laughs> that believes he's capable of anything. It's weird. He is, bro. Yeah, he is. He, like, created a white shadow clone the other day, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny. Did you see the other Lionel? What? <laughs> well, I don't know if you watch the other <laughs> What is going on? I'm the only shadow clone, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Okay. But, um, yes. So, guys, if you haven't joined our Discord, please join our Discord. That's where we are. Literally, me and Sebastian are always in it. We're always discussing it with the, the guys. And we have... Davies Dark Tournament this Wednesday? Yes, this Wednesday. No more uh, delays due to the Knicks. They sadly went out in six a couple days ago, but it was a good season. Yes, yes. Uh, we also hit our YouTube membership goal hey. um, for May. So I just want to say shout out to you guys for uh, getting us that far. Uh, so thank you. But other than that, let's say what's up to chat and then... Oh, this episode is gonna be three hours long, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. We will eventually get into chapter ten eighty two, ten eighty three. Yeah, ten eighty three. Yeah, eighty three. Yeah. yeah, sorry, they get mixed up for me. But so many people in the chat, man. Honestly, Maximilian, Goku, NFF, uh, KJ, Cameron, TJ, Broker, Captain Teriyaki, Marv, the producers in the chat. What's up, Marv? <laughs> Speedy, uh, Strahd, JT, Gabe White, uh, General Thirty. Uh, God the Usab, Q Skill, just Salah, Das Giggles. I love seeing so many familiar names in the chat. Project Greybeard, what up, Project? Uh, we got Nick Quavo in here, Ronnie Williams, Miguel Salah, like so many people from so long ago. Bellis, uh, the Shonen Jump Kid, Winston, Sleepy. Just, I, I just, I really love seeing all the names, all the familiar names, man. Red Hair Shankham, so many. Yeah, uh, Jose Zamudio, Pig Hudson. 
Just UMV, just so many people in the chat that I'm familiar with, man. I'd love to see it. And we got a few super chats sitting already, so we'll get right into them. Uh, we got a three month membership from our guy JT to Nakama Status. It says Lawrence about to get hammered. Let's go. T O P T. Go. Uh, yes, Lawrence. It's up to him whether he gets hammered or not. But we, I don't know if I should announce it or not. We doing stuff. Anyway. Uh, that we're drinking. Oh. We're 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 consuming liquid. Yeah, we are consuming <laughs> liquid in honor of episode 100. Yeah, um, shout out to that. Uh, we got another two dollars from Strahd. It says Law reading Safari piece with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually created my own. Never mind. I'm not gonna say that. I can say what? I can say what? 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 Oh my god. Nah, I was gonna say one piece, but like, no, that's like copyright. So that's not what I meant, though. It's one. not even pictures; it's just poetry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? I, I'm that audible chocolate, chocolate yeah. bro. He's like whispering. <laughs> As the moon <laughs> glistens upon my back and meets the sun. No, Come stop. on, bro. Anyway, all right. Got anyway, <laughs> we got another ten pounds from Captain Teriyaki. It says, "Happy 100, guys, and here's to a hundred more." Great community, great content, great host. Much love. Thank you hey, so much, Teriyaki. Uh, we got another seven dollars from that Shonen Jump kid. It says, "Congrats on 100." What you guys? Are, what are you guys hoping after this Egghead arc? Hoping for after this Egghead arc? I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Uh, oof, that is a really good question. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I think I've been so happy not knowing what's going to happen or predicting what's going to happen next that it's just all been great. Like, I think Oda has just been firing on all cylinders as far as this arc has been. So I can't really say, like, what I want to see happen because if I do, I feel like it's going to ruin what he already <laughs> has planned. Yeah. And I don't want to do that to myself. So that's just me. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick with the same the same sentiment. Like, I think the fact that we can't predict, like, a lot of what happened in Wano, we were all like, okay, we're waiting for story beats to get hit, yeah. right? We're so, like, clueless as to what the next chapter will be about yeah. mm -hmm. every week. I think that's part of the beauty of Egghead. It's part of the excitement. So it's just like, there's no more, okay, I'm waiting for Zoro versus King. I'm waiting for Luffy. How is he Luffy going to be Kaido? It's just, I have no idea what's going to happen. I think that's part of why it's been so good. So, mm -hmm. um I got nothing either, so I'm sticking with you. Like. I guess the main thing, which is just, just the thing we could say, is like um, why in the future tense you talked about they refer to Eket as the incident. Mm -hmm. Finding out what that is, you know, like afterwards, what what did that entail? Why is it called an incident? Because you know, like what's gonna happen? Yeah, like, that's like oh, that's the only thing I can add to it. Like you said, without because everything we don't know what to expect, but after Egghead, just finding out why it's called the incident. Yeah, because like. Cause this arc is not your typical arc. Like, um, like there's so much stuff happening in AK and overall, like even out on the outside world. Like, it's not lineups. It's not like this. Not even we can't even consider this Zo. Like, you know, a mini Zo. This is like a big thing. Yet it's like affecting so many other outside forces. Like, you know, so it's like it's we. It's hard to predict. But we're looking forward to because like so much stuff is happening. So much stuff is getting revealed. So much stuff like expectations being revealed. That we are like it's again it's hitting on all sides and we're like we're excited for it but also like it's unpredictable like mm -hmm. you could think of it theorize but like Oda is just going crazy with all this stuff and like and more stuff's getting revealed so it's like even stuff that happened chapters before so like we're just excited to see what's going on and like I can't expect uh, I can't have any expect I'm um, sorry I can't predict anything because like it's too much like it's too much going on and I'm just looking forward to what's being revealed next yeah. Uh, it's hard. Yeah, man. Are you working right now? Listen, I had to send a text, bro, real quick. I sent it. We good. We good. Anyway, we got a five dollar super chat from our guy Nick Quavo. It says Ebo shirt. Yes, sir. Hashtag one hundred. Yeah, man. Fighting Ebo. If y'all haven't watched Yo, Ebo, your shirt, bro. I'm not pig, bro. I ain't. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say show something, bro. Listen, man. Ebo's fire. I had to wear it. Even we even can turn this into an OnlyFans real quick. Bro. <laughs> nah. <laughs> We good. I'm trying right. to see something. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but shout out to my evil fans out there. Uh, we got another five pounds from the broker. It says, hi, guys. Congratulations. Read his accent. 
I can't do that, bro. <laughs> 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 says, hi, guys. On, uh, uh, congratulations on episode 100. Crossing my fingers, I get through tonight with the theory I shared with Larry. Here's to 100 more. Love you all. Thank you so much, hey, Broker. Thank yeah, you, Broker. broker uh, I posted Broker's uh, theory on TikTok, and it ended up uh, doing pretty well. Mm, awesome. Everybody, yeah, Everybody was like, yo, this guy knows Oda. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was really was good. good. Yeah, it was pretty good. Nice, a nice. lot of listen. There's a lot of comments on our show that is not good, <laughs> <laughs> but that was very well received. So okay. Broker should make his own YouTube. For real, Broker, we nice waiting love, on broker. you. Waiting on you, man. Uh, we got another one gifted membership from Terrible TJ, uh, which actually went out to Q Skill. So uh, Q Skill, say thank you to TJ in the chat and W's for TJ in the chat. Thank you so much for the gifted membership. Yes, thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a $10 super chat from Austin Hart. <laughs> it says, happy 100th, y'all. Fairly new to the channel, but y'all make my work day fly by. Much love with the pound. Thank Shout out to you, you, Austin. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. that. And glad we could, uh, keep working, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. And glad we could help with that. If know? not, just give up completely <laughs> listen, <laughs> what kind of inspiration is yeah. that? listen man sometimes you got let me stop <laughs> we got another five dollars from andre honcho it says hey guys been around for a little while and hope to get bigger in the community had to tune in for 100 even though i saved these for work congrats on 100 thank you so much you. i love hearing that people listen to us during work yeah, yeah that's y'all like, supposed to be working what do you mean by get bigger I think he what means being mean more involved. <laughs> what do you mean by what that? What do you mean by that? <laughs> we got another five dollars from Cameron Childers. It says the message has been retracted. So I don't know if it was a spoiler, but guys, please no spoilers in the chat. I don't oh, know if yeah. the spoilers are yeah. out yet or not, but please absolutely no spoilers for 1084. Will be tolerated. You will be insta banned. Um, we did get another twenty dollars from our guy JT. It says Lawrence, it's serious now. Don't miss another. Oh, Lionel, it's serious now. Don't miss another stream. <laughs> Lawrence, my top goat. Cheers to the man with the most consistent takes. To Larry and Seb, thanks for the acceptance. Seeing y'all succeed is enough to make a grown man cry. JT, you're not a grown man. I, I was going to say, I was going to say, when you, when you finally get to that point, <laughs> send us a picture, bro. I want to see tears falling, bro. Okay. I want to see you crying, hands up in the air. Listen, man. Asking you, God why. Why are you coming at JT like yeah, that? Shit, bro. That's our guy, bro. If you interact with JT any more than you currently do, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, shout out to JT. That is the bro, man. That is the bro. Uh, we did get a membership status to Shichi Bukai from John Hill. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Enjoy the emojis you, that mm -hmm. come with membership. Welcome, welcome. We got a 17 Denmark crowns from our guy Void and simply put a heart emoji. Oh, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Boy. And welcome to the TOPT family. It's about to hit bro. midnight for Void. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Uh, we got another two from Strahd. It says only the leader drinks from the triple cup. <laughs> <laughs> Why you got three cups? Bro? Yeah, I didn't want there to be a cup left out. <laughs> <laughs> we got another two from Gabriel Montoya. It says, happy 100th. Y'all the best OP podcast. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you. Gabriel. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so That's much. That's very nice. Very nice for you. Right. Appreciate you. And we got a $100 super chat <laughs> from our guy, Joy Boy Mark. It says... <laughs> Hey guys, I see the CGI is working full force. <laughs> Hope all is well. Can't believe a hundred episodes. Just want to say thank you for the constant high quality entertainment. I hope you all have an awesome day and all is well with you all, with your families, happy and healthy. Hey. Joy boy, man. Thank you. Can't say how much we appreciate that and, and just the well wishes in general, man. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. That is, you know, always it's a lot of money, but besides the money, the the generosity and just you telling us that means a lot. Yeah, and you too. Hope everything's well on your yeah, end. Yeah, well. for sure. Yeah, for sure. We, it, it definitely goes both ways. Right. Yeah, man. Pause. We, <laughs> we we got another ten dollars from John Hill. It says, "Congrats on one hundred. Best part of my week." Which straw hat do y'all think gets killed to cause the power up for the remaining straw hats to win the final battle? Oda is plotting. I know it. I think this thing's the same answer that we've always been given. Yo, so y'all been given. I got a different answer. Oh, oh you got a different bro. answer. Go ahead. <laughs> I think it's Sanji. What? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Nah. Oh, let's listen. That is, that is 
<laughs> so, so the reason why I say Sanji is because Sanji's dream is supposed to be very comparable to Luffy's, right? Like, Luffy can't be the freest man on the seas unless the red line is taken down, right? Mm-hmm. And we're all suspecting that the red line and whatever else, like, between the calm belt is going to eventually, when it's destroyed, lead to the all blue. Now, the all blue itself is something spectacular. We don't know if it exists, but we know that it will be created if that thing happens, right? Now, where was Sanji where he, when he almost died post-time skip from, like, his, his gag of seeing, like, his Fishman mermaid? Island. It's Fishman Island, right? Mm-hmm. Yo, Fishman Island is kind of like the all blue. So when he finally sees the all blue, he might actually like, like go, like he might pass away from just the pure happiness of seeing the all blue. Will it give the straw hats the power up they need? No, but <laughs> it could be the foreshadow to also maybe the Germa genes don't very last very long because mm-hmm. of the augmentations that's been had on them as well mm-hmm. but if fishman island is to foreshadow what sanji's dream would be i could see sanji like passing away from happiness mm-hmm. like he finally achieved his dream yeah because we don't know if he wants to become like zeph later on in life right <clears throat> like oda did make the the straw hats like certain ages but that's not necessarily like canon that's just what they would have been mm-hmm. right like we even have Usopp at a certain age but we all assume that Usopp might bite the bullet be- to become the brave war of the sea to fulfill his lie. Mm-hmm. But Even it, Luffy. But, yo, Sanji could be the one. Yo. Yeah. So, that makes you think I got one now? Like, you made me think of it? Because I thought of, right, because the main thing was like, to charge them to get the next power up, right? And I'm kind of linking into like, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, right? And it made me think of their most protected crewmate, Right? And I'm thinking, and I'm trying to think, is that Usopp, though? It's like, I understand there were a few of them, but I'm trying to think about, like, they would affect each and every one of them, right? So like, the one, their most protected one, the one that they would not want to see get hurt the most, right? But then the one that would actually, or would actually do it, right? Chopper. We got the hats on today. <laughs> <laughs> on. I'm not saying I want, I, I don't, I'm not saying I want Chopper, but I'm thinking he's the youngest in the crew, Right? And he's the most protected one because I remember I thought of like Skype when Zoro was trying to fight and he saw Chopper like getting beat, get beat down by um by I forgot who Chopper was fighting, but getting beat down by somebody. Zoro wanted to protect him, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like Chopper is like because like also too Usopp's like he kind of puts himself in that role, but like I feel like Chopper is the one that reaches all their hearts. They make jokes about it, but there's a special attachment for Chopper for all of them, you know. So I'm thinking the one that will pick everyone that, that for all of them to grow. I think it not saying that Chopper would die, but the one that will pick each and every straw hat for them to get a power up would be Chopper over Usopp in that perspective. You're saying Chopper's the cool barra of the group? Exactly. <laughs> Except uh, Chopper's lovable. Cool Barra was kind of like annoying, you know? Cool Barra was lovable. Because he was, was like, cool Barra was protected by Yusuke, but, but thing not, is, you know. But you're, because that's different because cool, Yusuke got power up. Yeah, when uh, when Kubar cool died, when everybody got power, it, it was, was Yusuke. Yusuke died. Yeah, but the thing is, that's what I'm saying is, Chopper is not equivalent to Cool Bar because again, the only person that protected Cool Bar was Yusuke. Yeah, he and this dude didn't care. But like Chopper, the whole crew would. Because after all, the next one would be Nami, but I don't think Oda killed Nami. That's what Nami. I was thinking too. Because I don't think overprotective Nami, yeah, but yeah. he's, he's not going to kill Nami. It was shocking when we saw Nami with the head blood blood. Like we thought that was too much. Yeah, because Nami doesn't get that. When you know the fish, um, uh, the Jinbei uh, Seraphim attacked Nami. You saw how uh, Robin even shocked me in the house. Like, don't you dare do that again. You know, so it made me think of uh, Nami. But I don't think Oda would ever do that. Like, he would kill off Nami. No, he would. But Chopper, I think he would have more of the leeway to do that than Nami. Mm-hmm. You I don't know? But that. I don't see either of them is it's it's Usopp. But given the power up, I believe Chopper would be the one that would hit all their hearts to, like, we can't allow this to happen again. Yeah. I actually have a different answer than all y'all. I know Usopp is my, the answer I've always given here, but Vivi. He's not on the crew, man. It's, I mean, listen, she's an honorary strong. They look at her yeah, as a crewmate, and if she were to die, it could still have the same impact that a straw hat passing would. 
and still spark the power up for each of them. But and we still get the re- the desired result from what the question is asking us. Every Same. not everyone on the show knows Vivi, like Frankie and Brooke though. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Take that O. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Yeah, uh, we got. Oh man, I gotta I gotta find it. It's in here somewhere. There we go. Uh, we got another twenty dollars from Caleb the Epic. It says chopper hats go wild. Can't tune in today. Hanging with a female friend. Okay. okay. All right, Caleb, strap Aww. up, bro. Me okay. to me. Strap me. up, bro. Yeah, strap, no, strap. No. Oh, take that. No, too no, young, stop. bro. Yeah, too young, yeah. man. <laughs> too young. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> Happy 100 though, guys. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, are going, y'all are going all out on the budget with the CGI today. <laughs> Still got to catch up to. I've been reading other manga. Hashtag Larry D. Go. You got to tell us what other manga you're reading, man. But, read One Punch Man. Yeah. Read, Just as good as One Piece. Chill out. Read Kingdom. <laughs> read Epo. Read Garmon. Anyway, uh, we got <laughs> another $5 from Splash. It says, drinking game, do a version of Never Have I Ever... But One Piece version. Example, never have I ever seen the Adele and Luffy fight. Splash drink, because that's crazy if you've never seen Adele <laughs> yeah, versus Luffy, wild. bro. How you skip Sky Bro, never have I ever thought Odin was Yonko level. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, drink, man. What? <laughs> you got drink. what? I got none in my drink. In my cup. I pour pour chew, up, chew some ice. <laughs> pour chew up, bro. Ice. <laughs> that's crazy pour you up. thought that, though. That's wild. Everybody want to give their never ever? <laughs> oh, no. I already did mine. Okay. Um, Lawrence is going to take forever, bro. Yeah. We're skipping Lawrence. Yeah. I know. I got none. Never have I ever... Damn, everything I'm thinking is perverted. What? What? I, I, I got problems, bro. I got problems. <laughs> you got demons, bro. I got demons, bro. <laughs> never have I ever... <laughs> I'm about to beat all yet. I never have I ever watched the episode of Pause. Wanda. You're about to What? Watched an episode of Wano. I know they haven't. Damn, I did it wrong. Now I have to drink myself. Yeah, I so just up. do it, bro. I suck. Wait, I, what? I'm getting confused with the game. I know y'all <laughs> haven't seen. Nev- it's never have I ever. So, like, if you've never done it, you say it, and then anybody else who has done it has to drink. We're skipping, we're, we're skipping the twins. Yeah, just go. <laughs> <laughs> we got another five from <laughs> anti- J- Anti-CJ, but there's no... Super chat there, uh, but we did get another super chat from Anti CJ that says, "Congrats on the 100th episode. What what y'all do is dope. Thank you, CJ. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you guys. We got another five from Pig Hudson. It says, "Happy 100th. I'm so glad I found this community full of love and hashtag Larry's bad takes. <laughs> now just end the stream singing Binks Sake." Oh man, that would be dope. I don't We're know gonna the try words. to do the karaoke. I don't know the words. I don't know the words. Yeah, don't know the words. In, the yeah. In the slightest. We might get demonetized. Yeah. We got another uh, $2 from Damar, but there's no actual chat there. So thank Damar, you, Damar. I hear Damar. I... Damar, I hate it. it. <laughs> <laughs> we got another five from Sweaty Ginger, but no, no comment. You got, y'all are super chatting without saying anything. What's going on? I think you skipped one. Did I? Yeah. Which one, bro? Anti CJ? Lawrence, I'm gonna need you to be on page for <laughs> everybody else. <laughs> I read both of the anti CJ super chats, bro. One of them is nothing. The other one was the congrats. And the episode what episode I think is dope? Did you ask that question? What y'all do is dope. Oh is shoot, said. I read that wrong. I know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We got another five dollars from Redhead Shankum. Uh, so congrats on one hundred guys. What do you think was your favorite TOPT moment so far? Mm. Favorite moment so far Jeez. on our shows? Oh, oh, yeah, on this show. Oh, man. Um, there's so many moments. I I would say the first episode. Mm. People don't remember that, bro. Yeah, oh, man. I would say the first episode. I was for there. Sure. <laughs> was there. Yeah, first it's, episode. It's not my favorite, but when the twins went off a couple weeks ago, mm. that was the closest <laughs> I've ever been to back being in that attic. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Lawrence and Lionel just debating heavily, and me and Larry mm. just like, you know, they about to fight. <laughs> it's not my favorite moment. I'd have to really think, but that's the one that came to mind just now. Yeah. So that's mine. 
This is another question you can't ask Lawrence. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Lawrence, Lawrence don't have any favorite moments. He don't care. <laughs> Stuff just happened, bro. He just here. Okay. So, yeah. I'll say when my we started name, taking calls. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that, 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 that's my favorite moment. That is my favorite moment. Yo, when they compared Lawrence to Birdman and Marv hit the perfect sound bite. Yo, Yo that was that was goaded, bro. What about you, Lano? Out of the twenty episodes. Shut up. <laughs> like, yo, somebody gonna do a count on how many episodes you actually was on. Oh, like, some of them I couldn't be on because we had guests. Uh-huh. I like uh-huh. I would have been there. Do you have a moment that's your favorite? <laughs> I can't. Just being here is my moment. All right, All right. Mm. good moment. That was that, that was, was sweet. That bro. was yeah. Yeah, that was deep. Aww. All right, next. <laughs> we got another five from Terrence Matthews. It says Blackbeard is officially bum beard until further notice. <laughs> 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 oh man uh, we got another five from Flame C it says I guess we couldn't get a return of Larry D. Clown but he will always be in our hearts <laughs> also congrats on episode 100 hashtag Buggy Kang thank you so thank, much thank you thank Flame you. C appreciate, that. You. appreciate you guys jeez yo, I, we're so far back alright anyway we got another ten dollars from Scrotalod. Scrotalod? What? It, <laughs> Scrotalod. It says Larry drinking juice from a pimp pimp cup. Talking about putting Sebastian on OnlyFans. <laughs> 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 Congrats on episode 100. Always great to see fellow black entrepreneurs making it happen. This ball. Yeah. So, Thank um, you, man. Thank I'm you. half black. Oh man, we got another two dollars from Brad W. It says One Punch Man Buster Call now. <laughs> yeah, I, listen, I haven't finished One Punch Man, but it's I, amazing. I don't know that it's on OT's it's amazing, level for bro. real. We got another twenty dollars from Gabe. It says Big Episode One Hundred. Proud to have been here since Episode Thirty Two. And can't wait for y'all future endeavors. Thank you so much, Gabe. Thank I know you've you. been here a minute, thank man. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We got another 10 pounds from Ghani. It says, sorry I'm late, family, but congrats on the big hundo. This is truly just the beginning. You guys deserve all the blessings and success coming your way. I cannot wait to see what's next. Hey, Prayer thank emoji. You. Thank, heart you. Emoji. thank you. Thank, thank you, Ghani. Thank, thank you. you. We got another five from Splash. It says, also dope to see... A podcast fully talk One Piece. People talk down like OP wouldn't whoop a lot of anime verses out there. Hashtag Safari Hat is in Usopp. <laughs> Yo, you, you get Usopp comparisons, bro. Dang. I don't know why. <laughs> Highly Lawrence, is, yo, you got, yo, listen, he, Usopp after the time skip, we came with the overalls and was flexing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you got that vibe to you right now, bro. I do not. I, I well, Usopp had a six pack, bro. I don't know if I'm you saying, do. He was bright. Yeah. <laughs> right, There's bro. no way. There's no way, bro. All right, we got another five dollars from Andre Hancho. It says earlier I met. I want to get big in the TOPT community. Also getting a one piece sleeve soon. Who should I start with? Hashtag all love. Hashtag dragon smashed crocodile. I can tell you yeah. not to get. <laughs> don't get that tattoo. Yeah. 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 Don't get that Please tattoo. Don't, don't yeah. get a kid tattoo. Because you might <laughs> no. lose your arm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How was it That's the same one with Shanks, though. You say if you say Shanks, you might say, might say the same thing. Nah, it's different. It's a, it's a different <laughs> feel, bro. Yeah. It's, it's a yeah. different yeah. vibe. Yeah. I mean, it's a different vibe. Um, he literally can't wear his heart on his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> they said Shanks gonna pick up kid's arm. And put it out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, we got another two do- three dollars from Steven Loizo. It says, uh, "Been too long since I've been able to watch." Hi team. Well, awesome to have you here for episode one hundred, Steven. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank man. you. Yeah. We got a few memberships that were donated. I couldn't see them in the link chat, um, but thank you so much to everybody who joined and was a member. I know I saw Gifted Subs from uh, Ragnar as well as Pick Hudson. Thank you guys so much for everything y'all do for our community. And everybody who is able to get those memberships, please uh, enjoy the emojis that come with chat. And W's to, to Pig. And, and and Ragnar in the chat, please. Thank yes, you. thank you guys so much. 
But that's it for the supers for now. That's so, it? Yeah. All right. Um, how about we just jump into the chapter, guys? We still have a chapter to go over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have, like, an extra 30 minutes, so then we'll just, like, you know, do our thing, and then uh, we'll get into phone calls so we can talk to the fans. Uh, all right. So, uh, One Piece Chapter 1083 has officially come out as of yesterday. And I don't know if you guys have read the official Viz translations, but there was some pretty, I would say there was a major change in translation regarding uh, Sabo. So we'll get into that when it comes to though. Um, the chapter is titled The Truth of That Day. In the cover page, we see Doflamingo. Due to a reader's request, they wanted Doflamingo offering his coat as a new home for a chick that fell from the nest. What did you guys think about this request, and is there anything more to look into? And we'll start with Lionel, because he knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I got none. Like, not even a little bit. Like, as adorable that looks, it's mm. still Doflamingo, so it was a weird, you know, but, because Doflamingo and a baby chick, I, but I got nothing. Like, I have nothing to say with this. Okay. <laughs> um, Law. Yeah, I don't have much either, because it's a... Um, it's not like uh, <laughs> Doflamingo got out of prison or Empo down, so this is like a real time thing as a request. But also, I don't think Doflamingo is the type that would do this. You know, honestly, I don't think it's in him. I don't think he would care one bit about this baby chick at all. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing I was like, uh, it's interesting that they, they drew him here. Like, I don't, if he noticed, I don't think he would give off his coat because that's something he wears to put on the floor for this baby chick that was, I guess, abandoned. I don't see Doflamingo and his character doing that at all. So. That's the only thing I have. All right. Uh, Seb? Listen, it's always <laughs> good to see the Don, King Dofi, in all his splendor and glory. You he feel ain't me? my king. Listen, bro. <laughs> you, ain't a, you ain't a dress rosa. <laughs> um, just like Larry, you know, let me stop. Let me stop. Anyway. Um, what? No, let me say, just like you you go to the Church of Anel. I, I am a resident oh, of dress rosa. Yeah. You feel me? Anyway, um, I I actually could see Dofi doing this. I didn't look, pay too much attention to it. I tried to look at the background a little bit to see if there was anything more interesting going on, but it just looks like a regular, you know, fan request, baby chick on the on the fur coat. Mm-hmm. But I could see Dofi doing it if he felt like it. He, he, Dofi. He's he's like he's like I don't know. I can see him doing it though. Why? I don't know, but I could. <laughs> okay. Um, for me. I didn't think of anything at first, but then I started to ask myself, when Oda receives these reader requests, he probably gets, like, more than a couple, right? And he has to pick from which one he wants to do and decide, like, this is the reason why. I think that usually everything that Oda does do, there is a reason behind them. And I'm starting to realize, like, this one is pretty interesting because it's Doflamingo, Mm -hmm. right? And we know that Doflamingo was a celestial dragon that fell from the heavens Mm -hmm. right now his coat is supposed to resemble like a bird well this is a bird crying out for help on top of his coat and it says a chick that fell from the nest so i was like oh snap like the symbolism the symbolism is Mm -hmm. there like it might really represent that doflamingos in turn trying to protect himself from what's to come. So the chick has like a bump. And the other thing I noticed was like, sometimes when we bump our heads, we'd be like, damn, yo, that's a nugget. This is a chicken nugget. <laughs> <laughs> you were spinning to just that. <laughs> like, you was really having real philosophical, <laughs> like, that was deep. And yeah, it was. Like that, yeah, chicken nugget. And then you said that. So I was like, yo, that's crazy, right? I was like, that's crazy. But then I was like, yo, the background also looks like Long Ring Island. Mm-hmm. So yeah, people have like theorized that maybe Long Ring Island was made by the previous Gomu Gomu no Mi user. And that's why everything was stretched out on that island, right? Or awakened on or whatever. Yeah, yeah. so they used their awakening to stretch out the island and turned into what it was. And it stayed, there, stayed like that permanently. But... I don't know. I don't have anything more to give. Mm-hmm. But I thought that was very interesting that why would Oda pick that, for example, and have that type of story behind that chick? Yeah. Like, obviously, you know? So I was like, that chicken's going to have Conqueror's hockey now. <laughs> <That chicken. laughs> yeah. Oh, and we were speaking about Yu Yu Hakusho. 
What happened with Yusuke when he had his little, oh my like, God. he had poo. Oh, what was it called? Poo? Yeah. yeah. Poo no, it was poo. 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 Yeah, yeah poo. He, had, he had poo. Yeah. And poo is a, a, poo is his living, like, spiritual animal, spirit animal. Bro, I hated that little blue thing, mm-hmm. but everything Yusuke went through for it was yeah. the best thing. Yeah, yeah it was, seriously. It was. Yeah, but then I think it turned into like a big giant like bird a or something. Phoenix yeah, right. Thing. Yeah, I still hated it. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, so that's what I got out of it. But um, oh, should we open this now? It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we we'll open it up at the end. We we'll open it at the end. All right, we received a gift <laughs> from one of our uh uh. Fans. It's Project Greybeard. Project Greybeard. Yeah. He sent us a One Piece uh, Monopoly board, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, that came in already. Yeah. yeah. So nice. I'm going to leave it up to chat. Do you guys want us to talk about the chapter or do you want us to open this right now so you guys can all see it? So um, let us know. Uh, Sebastian's going to put a poll in the chat just so we can like talk about it and then we can continue with the chapter. But it's up to you guys. That came in really fast. Yeah, he sent it like. Wasn't like last episode we he, talked about? He like yeah. ran it here himself, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. We got his like full government name and stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. Don't don't show that. No, I'm not. <laughs> but then he sent he sent you a gift for your your B day. Yeah. You want to show that too? I mean, we could probably show that really quick. Hold on. What's the chat saying? They're saying it's 56 67 percent Monopoly, 58 percent Monopoly right now. Yeah, chapter. Oh, it's 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 looking like people just want the chapter, bro. <laughs> so, man, All right, it's it's fifty fifty. Yeah, it's fifty fifty. All right, so we'll do it. We'll do it after then, because it. I thought it was gonna be a large amount that people wanted to see the present, but mm-hmm. it, it's not. So, <laughs> um, we'll just do the chapter. All right. All right. So, let's dive into the chapter further. As we open the chapter, we are led to Kamabaka Queendom. Sabo announces to Dragon and Ivankov that he had three objectives. Destroy the symbols of the Celestial Dragons to announce war. Free as many slaves as possible and take Kuma back. Then destroy their food stockpile. He completed them all. Due to Sabo's actions, it sparked a dozen countries to take up arms and eight of them were successful. One, Lulucia, has vanished. But the other seven under new leadership has stopped their heavenly tributes to the world government. Because of Mary Joa's elevation, it makes it impenetrable. But the revolutionaries have been attacking their cargo supplies. They realize the Celestial Dragons will now feel the brunt of their actions. Dragon then announces that the Celestial Dragons won't sit quietly. Most likely, they'll summon the Holy Knights. And that's where things will get tough. What did you guys think about this part of the chapter so far? And we'll start with Lawrence. Honestly, I was like, dang, you had three objectives? You achieved them all? Like, I was like, okay, because like, that, like, that raises uh, Sabo stocks, right? Because I was, I was thinking about, like, uh, you, know, you know, when you go into a battle, it's like, all right, if I can at least get this one thing, you know? Because at the very, when we first heard about it, it was like, all right, he, he saved Kuma, right? Because that's the main thing I thought he was going for. I didn't realize it makes sense though. You, you wouldn't just go for Kuma. You went for all this, but achieving all of it is a great is a great accomplishment that you achieved everything you wanted to do. Because that means you showing like we said before that he fully won the battle, right? And how it heavily like uh, and it's also smart tactic that he though he did because now I liked it because he's giving in a way. I mean, it just started, but sort of speak of what they've been doing to other countries, especially that can't give them the heavily tribute, right? They're attacking their food supply and also their their natural resources and money wise, right? They're, and that's part of their their main goal is because too, you think about it, right? They're revolutionaries. They're getting people on their side. So not only are they those people who are aligning with them are not giving the heavy tribute, but they're stopping others in a way from giving the heavy tribute and natural resources and they destroy their food supply. So now they're gonna be in a dire situation where like they not that they'll ever get to that point, but it's like for this brief moment these countries have been starving it got payback for it you know like we just read like last chapter about thousands of people were dying in this one country because they weren't having food you know and that's why in this was like strategically this was like genius for uh, to, to attack because now you're making them move here right because also too, remember last time we talked about how 
uh, I mean, most of you guys are saying that, like, Dragon wasn't doing that much work. And now he's just like, nah. Kind of like, my main target is not the Marines. It's the world world government and all their higher-ups. And, I'm, and I've been working, like I said, like we, I think we covered it too. Yeah. Already eight countries decided with them. Yeah, they lost one with Luis Lucina, but eight countries decided. And that's, like, that's new. Not even the already previous countries they had, you know? It makes you seem like the One Piece world is even bigger than... Um, because we not that we've seen the whole world yet, but like it's bigger than we had that all these countries, you know, uh, that they're fighting against with the world government and um, with Dragon, you know, and um, and then also too, I just want to uh, I don't want to take up too much time because I've been talking all right uh, for a minute, but now also I got a little hyped about mentioning the Holy Knights, right? Because I know people are gonna power scare and all that stuff like that, right? But I took this as to believe that, because we all thought, all right, CP0 is probably the world government's strongest, you know, fighting force, right? As in, outside the Marines, because, you know, that's the Admirals and stuff like that, versus CP0, the ones that could battle them. But now we get the Holy Knights, right? My perspective, honestly, I thought of the people who read who Hunter Hunter, it made me think of the Royal Guards for the, for the ants, right? And how we saw how strong they were, Right? So it made me think of the the holy knights, and I and from what I can tell, they're different because like you see some knight figures kind of like with the special dragons, right? Previously, right? Besides from like the uh, the marines and the uh, the agents following, you see some people dressed in like knightly woods. I don't think it's them. It better not be them because they don't look strong at all, right? But seeing the silhouette, you look at them. They look like they look like uh, they stand out like than those regular dudes, right? How and. I will leave the other comment to you, Lana, if you want to say that. The whole, I'm not going to say it, but yeah. But it made me think of like the Royal Guards and hopefully that they're strong. So I believe I'm going to scale them higher than the CP0. But uh, I don't know if I can say ammo level, that might be too much because there's nine of them, you know? If they just have, the World Government just has nine people ammo level, that's, that seems kind of crazy, you know? But so I'll, but I'll put them above CP0. Okay. Seb? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, shout out to the 12 nations that rooted up, and shout out to the the four that apparently took L's, because they're not going to get talked about a lot, <laughs> but <laughs> they tried to, to revolt and failed miserably. Um, but yeah, I like I like a strategy, I like war, you know what I mean, in general, in, in anime and manga. For Sabo to have, like, this whole thing where it's like, okay, I'm going to declare war by destroying the symbol, right, I think that was dope. And then I really like the part about the, the food reserves, right? So it got my mind thinking because I play a lot of battle or they used to play a lot of battle like uh, kind of games and stuff. Like that would be a huge tactic to get rid of the food reserves. I read Kingdom. It's a huge tactic that people use in mm-hmm. war. So removing the food reserves from uh, the Holy Land of Mary Jo, where are they going to go to get more food? But my mind was racing. Normally, under normal circumstances, they could probably just have Vegapunk mass produce them the fake food. Or whatever, if need be. But now Vegapunk is an enemy to them, <laughs> so now they really just don't have a resource for food. I thought that was kind of kind of wild, you mm-hmm. know? Like, where would they go to get food now? Like, I guess Green Bull could plant stuff, but then they gotta like plant it and, and everything. So I don't know. Um, but my mom was racing with that. Um, I, I, again, I like the little the little council meeting that they're having. In general, we talked about that last time. They still need a bigger table. I'm sorry, <laughs> our, our table bigger than their table, bro. <laughs> um, and and Ivankov mm-hmm. is huge, so. Um, I really like that the the Holy Knights are getting more shine here, because when they first got dropped, we were like, okay, where are they going to be at scale wise? Like, are they just going to be an extra layer of protection? Now with Dragon talking about them in this way, it makes it seem like they're going to be an actual real thing that we're going to have to deal with. Like we always talk about who's going to be the matchups for who, right? In the later and down the line in the story. Um, and for a while, we thought maybe CP Zero would be that for the Revolutionaries when they line up. When they're fighting with alongside the straw hats or whatever, now it's it's pretty obvious it's going to be these people. Like it's going to be the Gorosei, whatever, and it'll be the gods' knights. So whoever they are, it's been a lot of chatter about what people look like and stuff. I'm not going to get too deep into that, um, but I, I don't buy too too heavily into any of that yet. But I just think it's cool. I think it's cool to see them. <laughs> I do. Yeah. What about you, Lionel? <clears throat> I'm sorry. I want to ask. They were mentioned before this chapter. Yeah. Yes. Really. Uh, in this arc. Um, or maybe just before it, but it was a. I don't remember who said it exactly. I know that uh, it was 
was it Dragon again? Or was it Sabo? It was some... When they were trying to attack Mary Jo, I think maybe, I don't know, or something okay. like that, or after. No, it was uh, when they were doing the reporting. Like, Akainu was talking to the other dude who was a new, newer character, and they were like, the Holy Knights are having an, um, uh, they're doing their research. They're doing, like, an investigation on the situation. Like, they're like the, that's why people were saying that they're the, the, the eternal affairs of mm-hmm. the yeah. Holy Knights. That was the only time they were mentioned. Yeah. I forgot that's na- that guy's name. I think it starts with an R, though. He was. It was like black something, bro. Because like, he had an epithet. Yeah. yeah, he had an epithet okay. that's similar to Admirals or whatever. I just don't remember his name. Okay. Um, but I, um, it's good to see that the. I'm actually not gonna say, but it's cool to see that the the revolutionaries have objectives. Like we always wondered what kind of like what is their objectives purposely? Like them attacking the world, the revolutionary. I mean, them attacking the world government. But like, what are they actually doing? And it seems like the whole mission was to pretty much defect them. You know, with their food supplies, and like you know, so they had an objective to start something. I always thought they already in war with them in a way, like a mini war. But apparently, they didn't because they've been around for years. Yet they never declared war to them specifically. So I'm finding that was interesting. But now this was like, oh, we're attacking you, but this is actually our de- declaration of war. Like we're willing to fight you and take you down. Which I thought it was kind of obvious, but now it's like I guess it's like they're going more towards their goal. Which was pretty cool seeing that they're already, they're progressing and they're going to reach their goal. Like it's not like many things doing here, but no, they're actually achieving their goals and they're doing for a long battle. But like eternally, they're trying to affect them in multiple ways. And it shows like that. It seems like the world. Go- I mean, the world government now is like they're on they're on a um, uh, pretty much on a tipping toe table, pretty much because they're attacking by the um, what's it called the cross guild. Now they're talking about the the revolutionaries like. It shows that they they need to do something because they're like on shaky waters because how they're getting attacked by the cross guild and the revolutionaries and now they're getting hit hard on both sides. So I thought it was pretty cool. Like now we see the we see the cross guild and now we see the revolutionaries also doing their thing. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I also um, there's a big theory about the about the holy knights because how one of them looks. I thought when I first heard it, I thought DK it was crazy. looks, bro. Yo, <laughs> bro. Silhouette. No, but like, <laughs> I'm talking about like one one particularly. It's crazy. I first heard it, and I thought, still think it's crazy. Somebody thinks, two people I heard, that they say that that's Shanks as one of the Holy Knights. And I'm like, bro, no. But like, but it's questionable because like, we, he, we see Shanks, you know, with um talking to the guard, say, and like, why did he get, if it's, why is it, oh, because it's you. That's the question. Like, why is he getting this clout? With the Goro say in the world in the Marines, when it's like, all right, you but you're a pirate, or you're on the Rogers crew, and you possibly they made a, they don't know if you saw the uh, the last island in Raftel, so you have a lot of information, and also you also attacked the world government ship which had Luffy's fruit, which they wanted. So what, like knowing this, whether the government most likely the world government knew this, but why even though knowing this with Shanks, why is he getting his clout? Like I, I'm not saying that Shanks, but like it's questionable, like. Why is he getting clout anyway? But now, also, there's a figure silhouette that kind of looks like Shanks with the cloak. Mostly it's the cloak and the sword. That's what some people are saying. I don't think it is, but also the guy's wearing pants. Shanks is wearing, like, caprice or whatever he's wearing. But a lot of people think it's Shanks for whatever reason. Um, so I thought it was kind of interesting, but I don't think it is. But it's also that there's that also um, thought process but with the clout with the world government. And I thought it was kind of crazy. But, yeah. Um, hmm. This part was interesting. It was interesting for for two reasons. Uh, no, one reason specifically. Um, as you know, I've had some people on my fraud watch radar, you know, and Dragon happened to be one of them. And for me, when I was reading what Sabo said, he said I managed to complete all of my objectives. I mean, you can toss that up to him creating the plan and having the objectives and him doing this himself, or Dragon possibly creating a plan overall and giving Sabo a specific amount of orders to complete, and then once he completes them, he comes back. But I don't know how much that's true, that Dragon is the one who made this plan, because to me, it looks like he's the backseat driver right now, where Sabo is kind of leading the revolutionary army himself. He's the one that's getting the most fame uh, from what happened at Marie Joa, right? And 
I thought it was really dope to hear him say those things like, yeah, I, I, I needed to declare war. I needed to free as many slaves as possible and also take back Kuma, but also destroy their food stockpile. So it's always been a question. How do the Rebs fight? If they're necessarily not going to go in guns blazing, then what is their tactics? Is it? And we found out, well, they're trying to destroy the infrastructure of the Celestial Dragons. And that's a very smart way of war because even in real life, we don't happen to just go to war anymore. Like, nukes are of the past. What really destroys countries is, like, now cyber warfare. Like, if I could shut a whole country's electricity down just from a computer, then I don't have to waste the lives that would be there, that I could probably, and I don't have to destroy the resources that that country may have. I can actually take it all over and just starve the people from the inside. They've done that before in, like, past times in real mm -hmm. life. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. But what, what was really interesting for me is that Sabo hasn't really told Ivankov or Dragon what happened to Lelucia. Because Ivankov is like, yo, it just vanished. Nah, Sabo like saw it. Like, he was there. Right? He was there. Like, why didn't you say that? Like, this <clears throat> got destroyed by something in the sky and it rained down laser beams. Don't know what that is. <laughs> but Ivankov was like, yo, like, it just disappeared. And um, I, I think I'm going to get a little bit deeper into this later in the chapter, but this is one of the things I talked about in the podcast before. And it's when you have these countries and they're, they're rebelling against their kingdoms, we have to be very careful as to who comes into power after that. Because if not, you could just have a cyclical nature of rulers that aren't great rulers. And they will then become uh, the the opposite end of what you're hoping for in this uh, freedom that you're trying to chase after. And that's a very slippery slope if it's not taken with caution. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to what more of Dragon's intentions are, but also what the Revs plan to do if they ever succeed. So that's very interesting for me. But um, yeah, all right. Then we'll go to Super Chats, and then we'll go back to the chapter. Uh, yeah, we did get a few Super Chats sitting. Uh, we got a $10 Super Chat from Cameron Childers. It says, congrats on the 100th episode, boys. Forgot to post my message last time, LOL. But wanted to ask, wanted to know if you guys each get to ask Oda a single question, what it is and why. Hashtag best OP show around. That's an interesting one. Why he always lying? <laughs> why he lying all the time, bro? That's it. Dang, I had an answer for this a while back, but I can't think of the one I had. So hold on, I got it. Oh man, I feel like the cliche one is "What is the One Piece," but I, I don't, I don't want to ask that. So I'll just say, <sighs> damn, I don't have anything either. I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead, Lotto. What is that egg on Roger's ship? Oh man, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Like, why is it there? I don't know. I, I, It'd yeah, probably be something weird, like, yo, I just like Mario, and Yoshi's my favorite character. <laughs> I mean, Yoshi's dope. Yoshi's dope. Uh, it, it, my question would be something really dumb, though, honestly. Like, is like who's Luffy's mom or something? I thought of that, too. You know too. what I'm saying? Like, who is it, really? If I had to get one real question. Or something not even about One Piece. It's, it's I, funny, but we could kind of also do this, because if you look at, like, uh, the forums or whatever, they ask Oda questions all the time. We could actually just reach out to Oda and ask him these yeah. questions. You know Japanese, bro? <laughs> Larry does. That was a yeah, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> What's the thing? That was the, 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 look at the answers that he gives in that. That's all. Like, yeah. he's not going to answer that for real. Nothing that's going to spoil. I, yeah, but. I'd yeah. ask him who he thinks he could beat in One Piece if he was a character in it. <laughs> you know, he's is, is him, Shanks based off him? I would ask him if he could give me a doubt for what it would be. Dude, he's going to give you something crazy. It's Gecko Warrior. Yeah, yeah, he's bro. like, I already made no. you. <laughs> He's gonna give you like the whiskers, whiskers fruit or something. He's gonna be like, yeah, have facial. He's gonna be like, your fingernails could grow faster. Anyway, that was an interesting question. Yeah, that was good. We got another ten dollars from Jordan Meads. It says, "Why would Dragon be waiting for the God's Knights to make a move? Could they be in charge of ruling other planets? Emu would have to call them home. Possible." 
All right, so my bad. I complete. I'll answer that question too. Uh-huh. I completely forgot about the holy nights when I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so serious. So, uh, I'm gonna be the person that's gonna go against the grain and just tell you just straight up. I I I am not hyped about any of the the holy nights. I'm really not. And the reason why that is is because. These guys aren't known for stopping things that happen to the the celestial dragons. Like if a if an incoming attack was to happen, it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll protect the celestial dragons, right? Like they're specifically a group that handles the affairs between celestial dragons. So there isn't anything to say that they are powerful and it doesn't really make it interesting for me. If anything, they're like hyped up policemen that police the girl say to act accordingly and they have a specific amount of um credibility to disregard anything a celestial dragon may say that that's not peaceful to other celestial dragons Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so they don't necessarily do much now when i look at them from like a standpoint power scale point of view i think that why weren't they at marine ford the world government strictly depends on the Marines in order to handle pretty much all the world affairs, to handle out their heavenly tributes and stuff like that. There's never been one person that has rolled with any of these guys in order to get a heavenly tribute or to protect the world government from Whitebeard or Kaido teaming up and then them charging face first into battle with the Marines. You know what I'm saying? Like if Kaido came through when Whitebeard was there, do they show up? So I, I get what you're saying, but to me, are they not just the last line of defense for the Holy Land specifically? Like, say Marine Ford, like, say the Marines lose, right? And the the argument we had about Garp and everything that yeah. happens, whatever, they lose. Mm. There needs to be a last line of defense for the Celestials, no, up top. Yeah, I so, think that's what the God's Knights are supposed to be. So right? that that would basically mean that these guys are the strongest people in the show because at this point, it's like. If you're stronger than Akainu and all the admirals themselves, then why didn't you just take out the Yonkos from the get? Why not Why not take over what their territories are and make it the world governments? I mean, they could just have broken capabilities. That doesn't mean you're necessarily crazy strong yourself. I mean, you can I mean, just have something that will protect. You know what I mean? It, I, just, I just feel like there would have been somebody out there that Kaido would have been like, yo, I, I know that this person is out there and I'm mm-hmm. going to have to fight them. It, it's, it just doesn't add up for me. I feel like this is a group that Oda was like, yo, let me insert because it just sounds super interesting and it'll get people hyped. But to me, I don't, I'm not hyped about it. I'm just like, yo, these are some like dudes that just showed up. It, it could be that. So the reason why I'm, I mentioned earlier about the, what I thought of like the Royal Guards, like I thought of, for example, the Royal Guards and like Hunter Hunter, they only answered and served um, the king, at, right? So what if they only move when E moves? Right, like the because the, they like one friend said the night uh, the gods knights or whatever the holy knights. So he remembers to like the one who's going to be yeah the sister are called gods, but the one the king over them is E. Right. So what if they're like they're I'm not saying solely E's protectors, but what if they only move because the Gora say right they're kind of like the bridge between the Marines and the world government. Right. The Marines kind of get their orders from the Gora say, mm-hmm. but we see with the holy knights. What if they only directly link to E? You know, so when when Eam has a final decision that we're doing this, that's when the Holy Knights will like, all right, we're going to do this. Or said where the Gorsi's there has two responsibilities. They govern the Marines and they govern, you know, the government mm-hmm. where the Holy Knights is like whatever Eames moves. That's when we move. That's what I kind of thought, you know, it, it just it's not smart to me. I think that's what I'm trying to say. It's not smart. Like you've read Bleach, right? Yeah. All right, well, not all of it. No, all right. I stopped. Do you remember Squad Zero? Like, did you get to that point in the Blood War arc? With um, they were protecting with the Quincy. Yeah, they nah, were protecting nah, nah, the Spirit King. Nah, I didn't get there. Okay, so there was a specific amount of like captains that were considered uh, Squad Zero, and they mm-hmm. protected the Spirit uh, King that just happened to reside up in the sky above uh, Serate. I think that's what it's called, like the land. Okay. Where the Shinigamis, you know, train and do all their stuff. The Quincys came through destroyed Serate completely. Like, none of the captains, mostly all of them, almost didn't survive. Like, like they were done for. Like, Mm -hmm. Ichigo got his sword broken, all that stuff, right? Now, if the Quincy's 
then with all of their army and everything they have roll up to squad zero squad zero then now has to take care of everybody, everybody yeah. so the overwhelming force no matter how strong you are is going to override you to a degree and meanwhile these uh these uh what, what's their name again i forgot the uh, uh Quincy's the Quincy's okay. <laughs> the Quincy's themselves have special uh, abilities as well like yeah. some guy has the imagination ability where like he could imagine anything and then it affects you and then you just are done like mm -hmm. Kenpachi had to fight him and barely survived mm -hmm. but it's like yo if this overwhelming force goes up to the spirit king and only five people have to fight with them and they're incredibly strong what's the chances of them surviving that outcome and it's not many and that's kind of like my point is like the the Quincy's never went up there and did that, so I don't have an example to give. But they were strong enough to get to that point eventually, and still overwhelmed most of the forces for the Shinigamis, to the point where like they were like, "Yo, we we can't handle this. Like, we need Ichigo to save us." So it's like, what I'm saying is, even though that group exists, it's not smart just to protect Emu. You should be there on the front lines with the Marines, protecting them from incoming forces like. Kaido and Big Mom who happen to team up and then go after the world government because again if you have no world government to collect your heavenly tributes if you have no marines in order to protect your cargo ships to bring you food then those guys necessarily don't really mean anything you're keeping your pieces too close to your chest mm -hmm. and that's my point it's like we've never seen even one of these people come to the forefront that doesn't make me excited about them that just screams like Incompetency, you know, again. But that's what the world government is. Yeah. It's been incompetency. It's been just mismanaged resources the whole time. It's, this will just be that again. No? Then why are they in this position, bro? <laughs> they, you know bro? what I'm saying? Like, it they, really by, the, to, by they, the skin of their teeth. Yo, they just barely won the war in Marine 4, bro. By the skin of their teeth. That's an old Yako they fought, and they just barely won. I just feel like strategically, it, is, it just doesn't make sense. To me. Like, I'm, like, literally not hyped about these Heavenly Knights at all. I'm a little hyped. Just a little bit. I'm more hyped about Cross Guild and what Buggy's going to do. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Look at you coming to the light, bro. <laughs> no, I just think that literally it's a better perspective on the story. It makes the story better. These Heavenly Knights don't make anything better. It's literally an emu thing all over again. They get shown for one, two panels, and people are like, yo, they're endgame stuff. But yeah. like, I don't think anybody said, like, said all that. Come on, bro. Who said all that? No, they're, they're saying they might be stronger than the admirals. I, I, I don't think I, so. I, I honestly think... Yo, that, but they're saying that. And no, then the whole Shanks thing, too. But it's like, yo, they yeah. really think that they're, like, admiral level. Because yeah. the reason why is, like, they're, they're viewing it as their, like, their their last card, their, their trump card. And most people don't play their trump card, like, yeah. so early. It's like, well, we had this in our backpack the entire time that could change the game. All right, yo, you know? so, Larry, do you... Did you have you said you had an answer for Jordan's question? Do you remember what it was? That was my answer. No. <laughs> you not like I, don't, I don't remember. All right. It says, "Why would Dragon be waiting for the God's Knights to make a move? Could they be in charge of ruling other planets? Emo would have to call them home. Possible." I think I think I guess you're not excited about them. So the know. only reason I'd be excited for the Holy Knights is literally if they are the uh, bounty hunters. That were never really uh, like like further explained in the One Piece verse, right? Mm -hmm. Like bounty hunters are a thing in One Piece, and there's always been that yo. If there was a bounty hunter that was Yonko level, that <laughs> would go mad hard. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I would like there to be like I would like them to be like bounty hunters to a degree, mm -hmm. where they're like crazy, crazy strong. Yeah, it's just I I would hope that Oda has shown us one of them at least. Yeah, and I just don't want it to be Shanks. Just to answer his question like that. The why Dragon would be waiting, what I think, is like if you look at Dragon's tactics, right? The slowly getting, uh, it's kind of like you're kind of like um, we slowly weakening the Marine, uh, the world government, right? And all his tactics he was doing, all this is in a way to draw them out, right? Because you draw them out, then you could attack them because they hold up in their Mary Joel like all this time. Dragon's been doing his work all this time, but they won't come out yet. So he goes, all right. Now we, because like what he did, he's like he's kind of like taking their power away with the uh, the countries, but also kind of like defaming them. Where he's getting more and more countries, like no, forget the world government, right? So it's like you're you're destroying their name while weakening them. And now you did this right here. It's like they have to move now. Like we got to draw them out because he knows attacking them at Mary Joel's 
is not the best, but we got to draw them out because we want to destroy the entire world government. Yeah. You just taking one piece away is not going to do it. You got to destroy everything. I think I think overall too, it's like I think the Holy Knights would give me more like interest if they were at God Valley as well, because mm. if they are protecting or. They're not really protecting yeah. celestial dragons. I think that's what everybody got confused too. It's like they're not really protecting them. Yeah. They just handle the affairs of celestial dragons amongst the celestial dragons. They seem but it to wasn't be the police force of this. But area. they are police force, right? Yeah. But they like I would like there to be like there's never been a clear consensus of what happened at God Valley. Yeah. But it would be pretty dope in my in my interest if the Holy Knights were on Roger and Garp's side and they didn't appreciate that. That's why they didn't want to talk about it. And they ended up fighting Rox and this amazing crew that he had. That would make sense as to why the battle ended up being a actual battle. I think that would be interesting. But again, that's a long time feel, ago. Yeah. Again, that's a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So we don't know how old these people are either, right? Yeah. So I, I just think that right now the community's hyped. They're imagining what they could be. But for me, I, I don't think it's deserving of the respect or hype to give somebody that credit already if we just seen him for like two panels. Larry always <sighs> stomping on people's enthusiasm, man. Let people dream about the God's Nights, bro. I, I only say this, like, Sick. you know, I kind of agree with Larry to a degree because I don't want to, like, bring him on this hype because, like, we saw, like, CP0, they were this hype, and now look at them. Like, they're not, they're, they're strong in CP9, but they're not anything special that much. Like, good, they're afraid of Yanko, but I do say, like, the fact that Dragon kind of want like is worried about them or cautious about them kind of shows a little bit or indication of their strength to a degree. I would say that like I'll give it that much. Like Dragon's caution about them, show that they're relatively strong, but I don't think they're at my level at all. I think they're strong in CB zero, but that's that's it. They're strong in CB zero, but as Max, that's how far I'm going, bro. Dragon ran away from pre time scale Blackbeard. No, he didn't. Crow. That's that was post, one that was post time skip. Yeah, and and secondly, that's <laughs> also <laughs> his objective was no, trying to fight. That was during it. the time skip. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. It was very. It was after Dress Rosa. Oh yeah, my bad. <laughs> but that was <laughs> but his objective was the world government. And not again, black. No, bro, I get that. Again. But like, again, you can say whatever you want to say, but if Dragon was truly this oh, formidable God, person with the fact, like the the amount of firepower that he may have. Then he wouldn't have ran away from Blackbeard. Larry, we've you know done this saying? like six times. He's on the run from the government. They discovered his secret base. No, they didn't. I discover can't it. just stay there. He didn't discover. Like the government. It was in the news the, that the base was here. Okay, yeah. the you government, can't stay there anymore. Okay, so are you done speaking? That is what it was. Oh, you're, you're you're active, no, you're saying he ducked smoke from Blackbeard. Okay, I'm saying you're. You I know can't what you're just saying. Say that. I know what you're saying. Though. But you can't just say that. That's not what it is. Okay, so. They, the world government only found out after Blackbeard had told them from what I've seen. Like, only people, only people that knew that, that that base existed was Burgess, and then he told Blackbeard. And then somehow the world government got word of it. Mm-hmm. So necessarily, he, like, he didn't get found out by the world government. He got found out by Blackbeard. Blackbeard showed up. They were probably tailing Blackbeard to a degree. And then it ended up being like, yo, let's go stop them. We, and then we, Blackbeard just scutter, scurried away after he couldn't discover that they were still there because they left Baltigo. We we're on this too long, but I have so much more I need to say about that, bro. But yeah, bro, but like we've been on this one sh- super. But like, for a minute, if you want to go like strategically, it'll be the wrong way to fight Blackbeard. Thank you. Right even if it, even if it takes two hours to fight Blackbeard and his entire crew, men resources. Why is the just hell a waste am I fighting really a waste of time. Uh, Yonko and Blackbeard yeah. when I'm tra- challenging the world government? Because Blackbeard, and my hideout can be discovered by. Any number of people now. Because Blackbeard was no. What am I gaining, Larry? Because Blackbeard wasn't a true, come on, true Yonko. He's one. not. We're not gaining anything. What? Yeah. Do, what is it? What? Do, what is Dragon gain from fighting Blackbeard? So what, 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 what Lino is saying is that Lino saying that he oh, views wow. that Dragon views them as a potential threat and they worry him. Meanwhile, I'm saying if they are supposed to be as strong and Dragon's supposed to be top five, which you've been saying in your category, and we've seen a top five character like Shanks, who you think Dragon is supposed to be in comparison to, Mm -hmm. he just one-shot a kid easily. If he was to fight Blackbeard right now, he would destroy Blackbeard. There's no doubt about it. Now Shanks the one keeping tabs on Blackbeard. Hold on. And and because of the fact that Dragon has his whole crew there, by the way, 
I don't know if the commanders Finally were there, true. but Sabo was there. We had Hack there. We had other people there. Hack. Hold on. We had other people. Hack. There. Again, does does Dragon need anybody else if he's as strong as Shanks? Oh, does Shanks just one shot Blackbeard and his entire crew at that point in the story? We just have very different. Does views does, of does he? What, me what and you just have very no. He wouldn't just one shot Blackbeard, bro. Me and you again. We have he very barely, different views of Blackbeard. Sebastian, he do. barely won against Law, and he jumped oh. Law. Yo, you saying barely won? Like Blackbeard was keeled over. Like, oh my God, I'm dying. What happens to Law? What happens to Law if Shanks is just there by himself? What happens to Law and his entire crew? Law getting smoked. Okay, he gets smoked, right? Does he get smoked? Easy diff, no diff. Like, what's up? Is is. It's probably no diff, yeah. Okay, it's no diff. Blackbeard literally high diffed him with a, a, a crew. I don't. I wouldn't say it was high diff. He was bleeding. He so, jumped him. He got he, hit one time. Bro, he has two. He down. bled from getting hit we don't once. Know if he got hit he one got, time. Yeah, we saw him get hit once, and he bled from that. Yo, yeah, he got, don't know. can we confirm he got hit any bro, other time? The point. Did, can right. we confirm he was hit Sebastian, another time? He couldn't overpower him. Can we confirm him. he, he couldn't overpower him? Can though. we confirm can we confirm he, he was hit another time? Did he overpower him though? I mean, it's no. What are we talking about? He didn't overpower him. Oh my god, bro. He did it. He couldn't overpower Low. Yet you think that Shanks no diffs Low. Yo, I love how you're dodging. Me and Lawrence's point. What does Black? What does Dragon gain from fighting Blackbeard, Larry? Nothing. No, the point. I'm Nothing. Trying to, the point I'm so trying he to didn't make, just duck smoke because okay. he's weak. So the point I'm trying to make is that Lionel stated that these holy knights are something to be feared of, right? And I'm saying they we shouldn't look at it in that aspect because if Dragon is as strong as you believe him to be, Bro. then he would have just. Body Blackbeard. This is, this is the problem. This is the problem with people, right? Instead of just listening to what the author tells you, the author because is telling you that somebody is somebody to be feared. Yeah. I go nah. That doesn't fit with my headcanon. Oh, my oh, I'm the sorry. way I read the story. Oh, I'm sorry. So now I have to placate this other thought process that they're not. Th the author's telling you this is somebody to be worried about later. Okay. So, That's it. So That's who, all you need to do. Hold on, hold on, I got you. I got you. So did Oda lie about characters when they gain old age are still the same strength or not? When did he say they were the same strength? He said in the SBS. When? He said in the SBS. I can't tell you the exact SBS, but he said in the SBS that these Oda guys... says a lot of bullshit in the SBS. Okay, so right? how is that... I'm don't... talking about the actual story, So Larry. Larry, Yes, and I've proved it plenty Yo, of times. Come on, bro. Come Yo, on, they, bro. they try You're to talking say... about an SBS. I'm talking about the actual story. Panels. Okay, okay so that, Panels. Happens, that happens all the time. That happens all the time. Like, you're literally telling me that the author is telling us this is how things work. And then he goes back his, on his idea, and you're saying, no, just pay attention to the narrative. Well, I did. I did. Kid was supposed to be a rival of Luffy. What happened? Got one shot it. But in on panel, like Kid has shown, like we said, he's not really that. Okay. Consistently, we saw that on panel. I was. I was so what are we that, talking about? I say this with the Holy Knights, regardless of their strength, you could also view it as what Whitebeard said to me for the war, with Bucky's crew, that with Bucky's crew under him, with the level six prisoners, they're clearly not on Whitebeard's level. But their strength would utterly affect their objectives into the mean for the war. That it'd be a hindrance of them chop, um, accomplishing their goal. The whole lines could be just be that. Maybe they could be strong, or they could be weak, or where well, their strength would probably hinder it or be a problem to a degree to check the revolutionary's goal. But ultimately, they're not as strong as the, as like you know as Whitebeard and the higher ups. They could also be that. That's the last thing I'm gonna say. And just to tackle on that real quick, I want to also add, regardless of their strength. We also have Shanks. Like, we brought up Shanks one-shotting Kid, right? But we do remember Shanks. Was he worried about Kid? No, but he did caution. He was like, you can't underestimate these people coming up. So regardless of how you look at with Dragon, he could be doing the same thing with the Holy Knights and people. He's like, yeah, I'm stronger than them. It could be that. I'm not saying that he is. He could be, but it's like, you would be a fool to underestimate any opponent. And we said that from Shanks. Shanks is a prime example of why he stays on the top. No matter who he's fighting, he didn't underestimate anybody, right? He had Ace rookie year coming to him. He says, what is a rookie like you? Guard was up, approaching me. He went on Whitebeard's ship. Yeah, it's a Whitebeard, old man Whitebeard. And he's coming as a friend. He didn't let his guard down. So Shanks is a prime example of showing that you letting your guard down and underestimating people you're going to go against, that's how you get got, right? That's how you get caught up. Or like uh, quoting Queen, caught you napping, right? To me, believe that Shanks is the only person in the show that's like that. I just, I disagree. Dragon is very smart. He's going to use his head. He'll be the one to strategize people's strength in here or what they're capable of doing. They'd never be crazy strong, but like, yo, you could actually do something here that would at least 
stop me because like also too they made jokes about Dragon not having a lot of money resources like wherever he's using he's very budgeted right him fighting Blackbird and taking his things like I don't I can't afford this right now because everything is set up to for the world the government me taking on extra stuff that has to be on the back way. It has to be later, not now. My main focus is saving people, not fighting pirates for no reason. You know? And then the Holy Knights, they're strong, but I got to factor their strength in here. I can't underestimate them. So it could be like that aspect of it as well. I get that. I get all of that. And you're 100% right. But my point is, if Dragon, by some people's top fives with no credibility, no evidence as to why he would be a top five, is supposed to as being this terrifying person where it's comparable to somebody who can one-shot somebody like Kid easily and his right hand, then he should have absolutely no problem taking out Blackbeard, if need be, by himself. That's the point. Like, I don't think that, like, again, if Blackbeard was as strong as Shanks or Dragon, I'd say, yeah, that's 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 something that you, you're putting yourself in harm's way. But this dude, Blackbeard, couldn't even overpower Law, who's not a proficient hockey user. He's strictly Devil Fruit. And, and that's that's what I'm trying to say. And some people believe that Blackbeard is at a certain point, which he's not, and they got emotional over it and tried to talk about it. Like, that's really it. Like, you have a different way of looking at it and than I do. And I've, see, and I've proved it. Shanks would not clash with Law and just be like, damn, yo, let me do something else because I can't overpower him. That's really what it comes down to. Are you done? I am. All right, cool. We got another two dollars super chat from Mike Super. It says, "Nice Knicks hat, Seb, and damn Chopper Doe after the DDT." Yeah, Chopper went out in the latest DDT, uh, and screw you, Mike. But congrats to you. <laughs> uh, you know, it was a hard fought series for a couple games. I guess. Uh, we got another ten dollars super chat from Banks. It says. Congrats on 100, boys. Uh, I joined y'all recently and have looked forward to Mondays ever since. Keep up the great work. T-O-P-T to the moon. Hashtag chicken nugget. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. Uh, we got another $5 super chat from Splash. It says, can we both, can we do both? Because if that Monopoly is dope, I would love to get one myself. Uh, we'll get to the Monopoly at some point on the stream. Yeah. We have time. Uh, we got another five dollars from Anti CJ. It says, "Will Luffy call out war against the Celestial Dragons and try to face them head on?" I believe the the war versus the world government has been consistent for Luffy since he and he's lobbying. You know? Yeah, I don't think. I mean, they haven't stopped. really gone after him though. Yeah, like it, it literally yeah. declared war on the world government and nothing happened to him. Yeah. Yeah, his bounty went up a little bit, but it, they haven't, like, made him a focus. Yeah, I so. mean, Luffy didn't declare war, but shooting a flag is a, pretty much is a symbol yeah. of you declaring war, but it was different. Like, I don't know if um, Swatter Dam, whatever his name is, like, told the world government that Luffy did that, but... I'm I'm just kind of curious. I th we may get, like, he's going to team up with his dad, and that will be an effect on because also, too, they have to, for the world government's perspective, they have to do something about Luffy because, you know, he's Joy Boy and Nika. So it's like that's a heavy uh, enemy for them, like you know. And plus so, they, sorry, and plus they know that Luffy's Dragon's son, so they might even think that Dragon and Luffy are going to team up at some point. So they kind of put that with Dragon already, most likely. Yeah. All right, we did also get a one month membership to Nakama status from Jesus B. It says, "Love the channel, keep it up." Seb is my fave. <laughs> uh, we got another subscription to Yonko status from Anthony Herrera. So thank you so much, Anthony. That is our highest level of membership. Please enjoy all the emojis that come with being a Yonko. Uh, we get another gifted sub from Jesus B uh, that went to Mike Boy. So enjoy that, Mike Boy. And we got another uh, three-month membership to Nakama Status from I Hate Mo. It says, congrats on 100 episodes, gang. Y'all the goats for real. Another uh, Nakama joined. It is Mohammed Lire? 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 But thank you for joining, y'all, and I'll get back to the soups. It's just hard to see soups and memberships. Um, we got another. Where was I? Damn, I can't read. <laughs> my bad. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. We got. Here we go. Another 50 Swedish crowns from I'm Blue. It says, congrats on 100 episodes. Super glad I discovered y'all. Out of curiosity, who do you think would win between current Usopp and pre-time skip Luffy? 
Luffy. Yeah, I, I got, got Luffy. Luffy. Yeah, yeah, I got Luffy, I got too, Luffy. man. I got Luffy, too. It'd be... No, it's Luffy. Luffy. Luffy, man. It'd be mid-diff. I'm gonna give him mid-diff. It'd be easy diff. You think it'd be diff? It's just gonna be going, like, after... Um, I'm guessing, bro, like... Bro, Usopp is not any better, bro. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you're going by Luffy... He's really not. He's no. at least tough bro, to deal bro, with. Slightly, really bro. Really but if you're going by Luffy after me for the war... Right, that's because the Luffy we're going bro. And Luffy's... Shooting out a little bit of hockey now. The bro, only way Usopp has strike. a shot is you go like first episode Luffy to Usopp now. Yeah. Only, only yeah, shot bro. Usopp has. Jesus, only. bro. I he's still think Luffy's still winning. He's still winning. Luffy's still taking that. Yeah. Still winning, yeah, still winning. Still winning. Yeah, yeah. Um, still winning bro. All right, we got another uh, two dollars from Jalen Williams. It says, "Do y'all think Ace is with the Holy Knights?" No. What? He's talking about the sword. Roger's sword. Oh, Roger's sword. Oh, wow. They should have done it. Hell, I, I mean, yeah. So they're, saying that smart. The, they're saying that the the Holy Knight that we all, that they're all suspecting is Shanks, is holding the A sword. Or it's the bounty hunter that ended up getting eaten by that Sea King that Shanks got his arm bit by. Well, Goma, bro. Well, the thing is, like, how would they get it? Because I doubt Roger. <laughs> yeah, Roger gave himself, himself up. He did he bring it into he it. He yeah. bring it into him. Yeah. Yeah. Rayleigh like, got that sword somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hanging yeah. somewhere, bro. But that could be cool. Yeah, um, we got another two from Strahd. It says Black Horse Tensei. That is the um, the Naval Bureau investigation director that okay. we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Kurozuma. Uh, or Kuroruma, whatever it is. Uh, we got another ten dollars from JD. It says, "Happy I found this podcast. First episode. I've gotten a chance to tune in. Well, welcome. It is yeah, episode one hundred. Welcome. welcome. Uh, we got another five dollars from Anti CJ. It says, "Sorry for doing this multiple times. I just remembered another theory. Could Brooks Delfruit's awakening bring back the dead? I would love that. It'd be dope. You that would love that. Be you? I know. I, I know. I'm not the person that would love yeah. that." But I just want Brooke to be powerful, and I feel like his devil fruit should be crazy. His devil fruit should be a Yonko devil. Right, like it, it's, it has yeah, the potential bro. to be yeah. everything. I do think that because what you said kind of reminds me of Morge. I mean, wow, I said Morge. Um, Gekko Mario's ability that mm-hmm. in a way he kind of does something similar, but on a different, like on a different aspect That's of it. That's the thing. Like he would be embodying that, which was the arc, like yeah, villain that he fought. Yeah, or but, was but all with. honestly, real quick. If the like we talk about what Vagon was saying, if the abilities right are based off people's like dreams and wanting something, people's wills, you trying to tell me that one person in One Piece like will like I really want to bring back my dev loved one, and that's not Brooke's ability. Like you would think that would probably be one of the most, you yeah. know. No, so yeah, I, I agree. I think it might be crazy, but I'll give it to Brooke Awaken. Yeah. Plus, I mean, it was the whole thing about his crew having passed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It could yeah. be the his, the spark for that, but. Whatever. Um, we got another ten dollars from Project Iceman. It says, "Hey guys, do you think the reason Kaido never got a Devil Fruit Awakening is because he didn't synergize with it?" Now, hear me out. He was asking, akin to the Western Dragon of Europe and the Wise, more akin to the Western Dragon of Europe than the Wise Eastern Asian variants. This is something we talked about on the podcast a few times with Kaido's yeah. Awakening and the whole yeah. mind matching up with the body with the Devil Fruit. Um, I don't know if y'all have anything additional y'all want to talk about with that, but... I think he was awake, and he just didn't use it. Yeah, same. I, I think so, too, because, like, it showed that he was holding back so many times against Luffy, so I think he was just didn't think Luffy maybe was worthy enough for awakening, but I don't know, but... I think it was awakening. So whether he used it or not is an older miss, so... Uh, we got another ten, $100 super chat oh from our guy, Celestial Donkey. Simply put, hashtag... Buggy gang. <laughs> Thank you so much, CD. Thank you, Couldn't CD. Couldn't be a TOTT <laughs> episode without that yes. one. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Oh, my we got another five from Senpai NFT. It says, what powers do you think the Holy Knights will have? Special Devil Fruits, Strong Hockey. I'm spe- skeptical about strong characters being introduced this late. Yeah. Mm. I feel the same way. I don't know. Yeah. As far as their powers, I mean, I wanted to say... Dope mythical zoans. I'd say they're dope for users. Yeah, yeah. based same. upon the fact that like you have to face adversity in order to get your hockey up, right? And we've never heard from the top masters in the verse with hockey in this era mm-hmm. speaking about any of them. Right. Yeah, the closest one would be Shanks if he speculated to be a part of that group, but that would be the only person I would say. But what if they fought amongst each other this entire time they gained their hockey? Like, I, I don't think that even works, right? Because like, it works to a certain degree if they're Conqueror's hockey users. That I think that's the exception. But if it's, like, regular users like Kobe versus, like, Helmetpo, 
like their hockey didn't get extremely big, right? You know what I'm saying? If they're all conquerors hockey users, I can see how that would be different because they're continuously pushing themselves to the edge every single time they fight. Yeah, and kind of going with Larry's thing, we have those two giants who've been fighting for years. Like, they were fighting oh, each other. Oh, Brogan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, they, they should they, definitely they, have a hockey boom, but where I mean, was they that took at? that ship out, no problem. They've they been did. fighting for hundreds <laughs> of years. They took that so. ship out, bro. They've been fighting for hundreds That's of true. years. Shout yeah. out to Victoria, man. Uh, we did get another... Hold on, where am I? I keep losing my place. I'm sorry. All right, yeah. We did get another five dollars from Devin Bryant. It says, "Do y'all think the Holy Knights are celestial dragons themselves? Like the only strong ones?" That's a that great be a yeah. answer. I've been yeah. thinking yeah. if they so, are. But. So if if it's possible, then it would have like Doflamingo probably would have been in them. Yeah, or recruited to be one. Yeah, somewhere. recruited to be one. So it really depends. I I don't know. I'm still up in the air about it. Because mm-hmm. I guess they take certain celestial dragons and they train them solely for that purpose. Yeah. Or because to me, like for them to be policed by them. Because you see how they speak to the admirals. Yeah. They still look them below. But for them to be by them, they have to kind of command their respect, you know? They probably have to be celestial dragons it's, themselves. Right, yeah. Because yeah. they wouldn't let some lower common... People tell... Yeah, police yeah. them. Yeah. 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 I like that idea. I do. Yeah. We got another... <clears throat> man, we got another five dollars from Anthony Herrera. Uh, it says, new Yako member and first time donating. Keep up the hard work. Much love to y'all and One Piece. Hashtag Buggy Gang. Thank Aww, you so much, thank you. Anthony. Thank you. Seriously. Uh, we got another $5 from Anti-CJ. It says, would it be possible for the god in Skypea, I forgot his name, to be an ex-Holy Knight? I don't think that was in Anel's backstory. Gonefall. Oh, you mean yeah. Gonefall? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. To be it. Mm. Listen, if that's the bar, then yeah, yeah, everything Larry said. Yeah. 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 I think If Greg is hyping up Gonefall <laughs> level, folks, man. <laughs> Listen, bro. I, that I, is I, bad. I, I, Everybody I, thinks I'm wrong <laughs> until it comes forth, and yeah. then I come over to my side. So it's okay. It's not gonna be gospel, I'll feel bro. The no, it's no, not no, no. We could. It's reasonable to believe that people introduce like powers get introduced now this late in the game are kind of reasonably to be strong. You know. Listen, bro. bro that's crazy. Bro. Lucci got no diff. <laughs> <laughs> So, but also, but no now, gift in bro. gear fifth though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was not, no, not it, trying. In gear fifth though, you know, Luffy's strongest. Not he didn't even activate it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> he was trolling, bro. He was trolling. All right, we got another two dollars from Jesus that. B. It says, "Like the stream, yes, absolutely like the stream. If you guys yes. haven't already, it does help with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much." Jesus be new member. Uh, it says, uh, we got another $5 from Terrence Matthews. It says, there's a special paramecia. There's ancient and mythical zones. So what's the special class of Lagia? Is it cosmic Lagia? What do you think? I never thought of that. Cosmic Lagia. A cosmic Lagia? It have to be. So Lagias are, or Logias are like. There's they're, nature. It's yeah. nature. So or elements. They're and elements. Stuff. Yeah. So what is the secondary level of elements? Or Probably nature? the. Uh, Atomic, maybe? Co- he's a cosmic. Like is celestial he powers? No, like, but is he, celestial? But no, but is he talking about, like, now going to outer space elements? You well, know what I'm outer space is, like, darkness, like, gases. Yeah, but then you're, you're talking, like, dark matter. What's that yeah. guy from, like, D.C.? He just, like, made of energy. Like, that type stuff? The he's Adam like, I think Adam? Dr. Manhattan? No. no, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> no, the blue guy. No, he's no, talking no. about the guy with those silver He's in the Justice League. And he is, like, they no. are kind of, like... They can't hear you, Marv. <laughs> we can hear him. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah, he has, like, red gloves. Yeah, no, no. gray suit. Captain Canada? <laughs> yeah, Captain Adam. It Captain is Captain Adam. Adam. Yeah. Is it Captain Canada? I don't know what y'all talking about. I'm not, I'm not a DC buff. I don't, I don't, but I don't that would be dope. It, it has to be, like, universal. The thing is, I feel like yeah. Loggias are already, like, more broken than the other ones are. Like, I think it would be kind of wild for them to have, like, a, a, another rare thing. Like, I think Oda made rarer versions of the other ones because he realized, like, Loggies are just better. But the thing is, we only <laughs> heard, like, we only heard a special Permitia with Katateri. That's the only special Permitia. I'd say, Permitia I'd say science. there's other special. No, yeah. there's probably, like, Kekai Genkais. You yeah, know just, how, like, there like, was two elements that transformed into one in Naruto? Mm-hmm. He'd probably do that with others. Like, there's probably, like, a fire and earth guy and that's a kind of yeah. like lava mm-hmm. but like you know how we get introduced like there's like supposedly like mythical god zoans mm. why would zoan be the only one what if there's like 
Par- mythical god of Paramecia well, Zoans and Logias. Have, well, Zoans have uh, life. Like, yeah. like they're, they're entities mm. yeah. to a degree. So you could make that into any person because yeah. that's where most pagan gods are made out of, right? Like, yeah. just entities itself. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. But yeah. for it to be, like, a nature, like an element, you're you're omniconscious. Like, you're omnipotent at that point. But like you can do anything. I guess because, like, for instance, Gaia. Like, I mean, I know Greenbow kind of fits that bill, but Gaia, she was, like, a Earth type of thing. But she was, like, Mother Nature. She, yeah, but is she, like, a, a deity in a way? Yeah. So she's I'm a deity. Like, so I mean, how, like, I mean, good. I don't know if they're going to, because Green Bull is pretty much that. But that would fit in the line. Nah, of you're going to get people going into the forest god. <laughs> <laughs> that forest god got put oh, down man. by Yamato, bro. <laughs> we're, we're past he's that. Right. He's all right. We're past that, bro. I don't know about forest god, but you like. Did you think uh, of the first lot, Sebastian? <laughs> first Okage with that? Listen, Hashirama to go, bro. Uh, yeah, Hashirama is yeah, a good yeah. one. All right, we, we got to move on. Yeah, we got another two from Strahd that says, The Holy Knights upheaved God Valley. Uh, we got another four. From Mugisha Mutahaba, it says, The only title that matters is Pirate King. Larry is right. I don't know what that was about. I think uh, we were arguing about a lot of stuff. So, I don't know. Anyway, uh, we got another $2 from Matt Cypher. It says, The narrator walked back on Kaido beating Luffy. What are we doing a lot of walking back? Honestly. Uh, we got another $2 from Yonosuke. It says, what's up, guys? Ready to call in today. We're trying to get the calls. We just got to finish the chapter and <laughs> any super chats. I know. Uh, and <laughs> and other stuff. Uh, we got another $10 from LJ916. It says, Shanks technically got attacked by Blackbeard before and got that scar when his guard was up. Why don't you think Shanks took him out back then, even though he was he knew he was going to become a big threat? This is, this is again, this is where people get so... They get me so triggered, bro, because <laughs> they consider what Shanks is right now the same strength that Shanks was 12 plus years ago. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, bro, you have to understand, Shanks fought Blackbeard at an unspecified time during the past. It could have been before Mihawk. It could have been after Mihawk. But all three of these individuals, Mihawk, Shanks, and Blackbeard, could have not been that strong. Even though Whitebeard said, damn, your battles were legendary with Mihawk, that could just mean that they were legendary for their strength level. It doesn't mean that they were strong as they are right now where they are in the past. So if Blackbeard hurt Shanks, scarred his face, and then Blackbeard gets one shot by Magellan with his entire crew, and he needs Shiryu to give him the cure in order to live his life and proceed to go after the Pirate King status, does Shanks get one shot by Magellan? The answer is no. Yeah. Absolutely not. Why? Because Shanks is stronger than that. He got stronger than that. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why people can't grasp this train of thought. They just think that Blackbeard is the same strength as he was back then right now. No, he got stronger. He got the Yami Yami, right? Yeah. That makes him stronger, right? He got the Quake Fruit, right? Everybody says, yo, Blackbeard in two years can awaken his Devil Fruit. He needs two years, though. So why don't we give that same thought process to Shanks? I'll never understand it, bro. I'm gonna be real. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> it's okay, man. I was trying to read <laughs> some stuff here. All right, we got another. Hold on, where am I? 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 Uh, Ten dollars super chat from Gadi Usopp. There is no comment though, but thank you so much, Gadi Usopp. You are always in uh, the live stream supporting thank you, thank us. You. So thank you so much. Literally, somebody said, "Yo." Blackbeard let himself get one shot to the point of death that he needed somebody to save him. <laughs> like, I literally just read that. Yo, Larry Reed in two piece. He let Magellan do that. Crazy, though. <laughs> it's crazy that even Blackbeard's crew said, yo, we were saved because of fate. <laughs> this is what I mean, bro. This is what I continuously face on an everyday basis. The biggest glazers of all time, bro. Swamp piece, bro. People just don't understand logic. That's really what it is. <laughs> we got another ten dollars from Snaps Anime TV. It says, "Who do you believe will die at the end of One Piece, Mister? I see Usopp dying, or maybe it says me. I see Usopp dying. Um, I guess he means on the Straw Hat crew. Who would pass in One Piece? Uh, Come on, in Straw Hat or in I general? Think, I just don't. I don't think Shanks makes it to the end personally. I just. I don't want him to. I. <laughs> I don't want Garp to make it to the end either. Law, maybe. I'd, I'd prefer he didn't make it either. Um, those are the generic ones. If I had to go with somebody deeper, Luffy is another one that's also generic, I guess. But, but that goes against your, with the whole Zolo and Mioc thing. 
<sighs> Listen, bro. I can have multiple theories. <laughs> <laughs> All the One Piece. There's a lot of people that die in all the One Piece. Yeah. There's a lot. Nothing. I'm Nothing. still mad about the Black Piece. <laughs> <laughs> Larry be so mad at reading comments, bro. It's not that deep. <laughs> all right, we got another twenty. Do- oh, we have another five uh, Australian dollars from Mahui Rawi Ra- Rahe. It says Orihe. Am I the one only one that thinks the world government don't have any control over the God Knights? Which would make the most sense? No. Which is Shanks' crew? I, I, I'm just never going to subscribe to the God Knights being Shanks. Yeah, yeah. I, I could, I, Shanks yeah. having a brother, it'd be goofy, whatever. Him being part of the Figurlin family, that being the Figurlin family, what, that, that all can work. Shanks' crew isn't the God Knights. Yeah, they're it's not. not. Like, they're I think not. I feel like we can all acknowledge that. Yeah. Right? yeah. They don't even look like, the, shil- the silhouettes don't even look like Shanks' crew. I mean, Lawrence even said, like, Shanks could have a twin brother, like, you know, with the, yeah. with the chest thing. <laughs> Lawrence would say that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Twin power, though. Oh, man. <laughs> But not, but, be cool but then not cool. being in control of the National Knights, they just do it like they're the only ones that like under they they protect them, but like uh but they kind of do whatever they want is interesting. But mm-hmm. them being the Shanks Pirates, the Red Hair Pirates, nah. Nah. But them, that's interesting where they like not, nah, because uh that's probably why they don't interfere. It's like, nah, we yeah. do what we want. We only do things that they deem necessary to uh take part in. Yeah. Alright, we how got far, how much more do we have to go? This is the last one. Um unless there's more that updated. $20 from Muhammad Lear. It says, hi, guys. I have two questions. First, Lawrence, would you cosplay Mr. One for Halloween? <laughs> and the second, I asked Larry, would you rather have a Kainu as your father rather than Dragon? <laughs> and he said he would. <laughs> Do you guys feel the same way? <laughs> wait. Wait. <laughs> what? Well, what? Uh, would, you, would you cosplay as, as Mr. One? Not, forget the Halloween part. Not for Halloween. You, yeah. Not for Halloween. But if y'all, y'all want it... um. We could make um. Y'all give Lawrence the easy cosplays. I gotta yeah. paint myself blue for hours, <laughs> and Lawrence just gets to take his shirt off, bro. I don't want to take my shirt off. No, no you gotta, well, okay, bro. Whatever. This one's cosplay. Bro. Whatever, bro. You gotta wear some pants. <laughs> maybe, maybe a vest. But not for Halloween. I have Lawrence, to you paint have... myself blue, bro. But don't you? He also have like a tattoo in his like front. Yeah. I had to do that too, Lotto. Yeah, you kind of. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um. So okay, cool. Would y'all rather have a kind of as a father or a dragon? Definitely not a kind. Are you crazy? I mean, he's not gonna kill you, bro. If I spill milk, I feel like you would burn me or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> but as a kid, you don't know how he is as a father, though. You can't. I'll be that. honest. I'd rather have an absentee father than whatever a kind who probably is like. Yeah, father. Dude. but that's different. That's the people that he sold he, us. Us. he could be an excellent father. You saw Kobe as Lawrence, a kid. At least you got milk in the house to spill. <laughs> Dragon wants to go get that. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. He ain't come back. <laughs> but Yo, y'all should have seen it. Larry was tweaking on Three Bull Stream the other day, bro. Talking about Dragon and whether whether he's a good father or not, and, and, and comparing him to other fathers. It was it was it was terrible, bro. It was terrible. At least Dragon would let me live free. I feel like I kind of wouldn't. I mean, you would have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got two more real quick super chats. Uh, two dollars from Sloppy Ranger seventy six says, "I'm so proud of you guys for making this community. Thank you so much. Oh, thank, thank you. you. We, you yeah. don't understand how much that means to me, Larry, Lionel, Lawrence. We we love hearing that from you guys. Yeah. And we got another two dollars from Drek the Drek. It says, "If covered in hockey, Shanks isn't immune to poison. I feel like if the poison is devil fruit related, he would be. But whatever. I don't know." I- I just think of like when remember when um Luffy was fighting Caesar and he like hockey hard in his arms that thing whatever what's that that thing he fu- that Caesar fused with it didn't affect Luffy mm-hmm. you know we know that Magellan is uh, stronger than uh, uh Caesar but to me it's like with strong hockey you clout yourself with it maybe you could not get affected by poison you know yeah so I'm just using that like hockey if, yeah. will allow you to survive anything but that's yeah. all the super chats for now so. all right let's get to this uh. So, Avankov reminds Sabo that he's considered the Flame Emperor now, and he doesn't quite like the moniker. Dragon tells Sabo that no matter how King Cobra passed away, it's turned him into a hero. The rebels view anyone affiliated with the world government as an enemy. He further explains that there are wicked kings, and there are just kings. 
Uh, King Cobra is known far and wide as a great man and leader, but news doesn't spread accurately. Sabo says he's sorry, but this perspective from everyone suits him just fine. Anything that spreads the flames of the revolution is worth it. Dragon responds that he likes his attitude. Avakov then begs Sabo to tell him why he's standing above a fallen King Cobra on this newspaper, and they've all been searching for an answer as to why he'd be capable of this. They want to believe in him. Then Sabo stares at the newspaper nervously. What are your thoughts on this, guys? And we'll start with Lionel. Honestly, I was talking to Lawrence about this. I don't know if they clarified on the newspaper, but how do people know that Sabo? Especially Dadan and um and um Shanks' baby moms. I forgot her name. Makino. Makino, there we go. Um, cause like, cause for instance, Dadan said like we thought you were dead. I mean, thought you thought you were dead, and we just found you alive. So, so say don't it so Sabo. Say don't is it so Sabo? Saying that they killed Cobra. And I'm thinking. Because you, off this picture, you don't have a good picture of Sabo's face. And basically how Sabo looked at when he was a kid to now, he looked completely different. Oh, what do you mean, bro? He has a bounty. They, huh? I'm yeah. sure they said his name in the newspaper. Did they? Right? I don't, I told did, them did you think they didn't say they, his name, bro? I told the them. Random scrub kills. Co- what do you mean, bro? I told them that. He's a 602 billion berry bounty, bro. They I know guess. who he is. <laughs> That's I what I guess. Told them. But I was just I don't know. Because I was just like... I'm tripping. <laughs> no, I don't know. I didn't. That's what I, happens when you're only on the show 43 times. We did the math. <laughs> we did the math, Lionel. No, no, no. I got the math. Oh. You got the, I got the math from Quavo. 43. You ain't even that. You ain't even that. 50. Shut up. You ain't even that. First of all, first of all, first of all, some of them are not my fault. So shut up. I don't care, bro. Yo, what do you mean you don't care? <laughs> what do you mean that's not? I can't control that. Listen, bro. Like, bro, I would have been here, but stuff happened. Ain't I can't. Even, ain't even at 50, bro. I'm gonna smack you, bro. <laughs> you know what, you know what you I don't love you, no. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I take that back. That's crazy. Bro. <laughs> That's recorded forever. Bro. I'm joking. For Sebastian, I'm going through a hard yeah, time yeah, and watch yeah, this yeah. again and be like, yo, they don't. <laughs> I can't. Those are jokes. Coming Larry first, had bro. me yelling. <laughs> Lionel told me he don't love me. <laughs> oh, man. 43 apps is crazy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Can't shot. Can't. Anyway, see that makes me lose my train of thought. Um, but we do got like two more questions, guys. I low key ain't been here all 100 either. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I got nothing. I got. If I lost my train of thought, you all guys right. go, man. Lawrence. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I thought this was a little cold from um, <laughs> from uh, Savo and Dragon because he was like, I like that attitude because it's like this is the death of Cobra. Right? It's just like, for what what a dragon says, from the perspective of the rebellious, anyone affiliated with the government is an enemy. He says, yeah, this guy is actually a righteous king, a good king. He cared for the people. He did a lot for them. Right? But it's just like, but they view him as an enemy because, like, most kings from, I guess, affiliated with the world government are not so. Right? So everyone kind of believes, I guess, from the rebellious side, believes that Cobra was, like, probably like those other kings if they haven't met him personally. And Sabo's just like, I'm sorry, Cobra, but like anything to get people on our side and to fuel this fame, uh, to fuel this, fuel this uh, flames revolution because we 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 on the move right now. We're we're a high momentum. We just came off a big W, and we're gonna ride this until the top. Like this morale now, the morale's high. And Dragon's like, Yo, that's, I'm with that. Like you know, like I'm like, Yo, that was cold, brother. Because Dragon, what happened to the whole switch up, Sabo? <laughs> like you know, Dude, he was all I angry. Need he was all angry when Sabo wasn't around. <laughs> when Sabo came around, he was like. It's all right. Yo, make me <laughs> right. Man. Yeah. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah. Nah, up? But I just thought it was like, because to me it's like, when I thought of look at Sabo's face, they they got mission on the brain here. It's like it's like what's done is done. They can't do nothing about it. You know, they they're not broke. They can't bring back that. No, I'm kidding. But anyway, like what's done is done. They can't do nothing about it. But they're gonna use this because they end up working in their favor. Because you would think Sabo killing Cobra, all right, just king. That's why would governments, I mean, why would uh, kingdoms affiliate with you? It's like, nah, you out here killing, we're going to side with you, we're going to end up dead. But now nah, it actually happened in reverse. It's like, nah, like, yo, let's go. We're att- we're, they actually do something about um, attacking the government. So if it end up fueling that. And um, we're finally going to get to the uh, the story where we've all been waiting to hear what really happened while Sabo was there. So we got to move on. I'll end it there. Seven. Yo, Dragon should have poured one out for his dead homie, man. <laughs> Keep drinking right there. Like, you can see the cup. 
<laughs> just tilt that out, man. Pour out a little liquor for the dead homie, bro. You gonna you gonna speak on how that's your man's and how like you he he got a bad rep to the world right now and he's dead and y'all y'all happy about it. Pour one out, man. He could have did that. He could have tilted that cup. Um, in general, I thought it was weird that Dragon did switch up a little bit when he was talking. <laughs> Yo, he had a whole different energy regarding Cobra and Sabo and information a couple chapters ago. And now that we hear, his energy a little different. That's all I'm saying. I, I, I ain't like that. I ain't like that, Dragon. I got you top five. You got to start acting like it, bro. Um, but whoever took that picture, shout to them. That's a clean yeah, picture. The same thing. If I ever bought a body... And I was trying to be famous for it. That's the picture I want. <laughs> you got the wheelchair still spinning, bro. You know what I'm saying? I got the lead pipe. He dead. I got, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just, that's a cold picture. Even Sabo's looking at it like, damn, I look crazy. <laughs> like, Body that. Um, obviously, Sabo didn't take, I mean, I, I'm assuming. There is take no out. blood on that pole. I'm just saying. I mean, you can use his fist, bro. Clawing people yeah. or whatever. Um, the claw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's his whole fight. Yeah, that's <laughs> claw. Oh man, but yo, Samo, Samo and Dragon. That's a little, gr- little, little. I didn't expect that from them. I'll yeah, say that. Word. I didn't expect that. Like, yo, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the man, but I ain't know him like that. And if it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna rise the revolution yeah, up, then. <laughs> Necessary sacrifices. <laughs> I was I wasn't planning on reading that <laughs> from Sabo. So it's good to know Sabo has that little edge to him. Got that dog in him. Yeah, he poured up his little little henny too, bro. He's mm-hmm. sipping up. Don't let a Von Kopp drink though. It's gonna get wow, no, crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just not go there. <laughs> Why'd y'all bring that out? <laughs> <laughs> it's not just no. I ain't seen Eva drink one thing, man. They know not to get. I think they poured him up. Dragon toe, you ain't drinking <laughs> nothing. Yeah, nah, yeah, you know how you get. Yeah. You know how you get. Yeah. You ain't drinking nothing, Ivan Kong. Even the thing, listen, thing. Listen, 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 only Sabo yeah. and Dragon yeah. got cups, bro. No, all three of them got cups. No, no, they cups in oh, it. I'm drinking. saying it's not poured up though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not poured up. Look, even when he's pouring, the one that's closest to Ivan Kong ain't got no juice in it. Yeah, no. ain't got nothing in there. Um, I think I think when it comes to this, it's like, for me, it's it's again I go back to the same idea that I presented before. If they succeed, what will you leave for the future? Mm-hmm. And I think this is showing that Dragon and his personality by him saying, you know, whatever happened with you and Cobra, you know, it was necessary, and I agree with it. It's like. If your ambition becomes sometimes revenge, you end up destroying yourself. You end up destroying the world more so than the person you're trying to take it from. And I think that that's where it's going to get really tricky with the revs. We're probably going to have to start looking at the revs as probably an opposing force to the uh, to to good, because you you can't just start taking people out, and then you have all these countries rebelling, but they're rebelling for the wrong reason. Like if if Cobra is a good king. He's a just king. He's a noble king. Throughout the lands, they knew him as so. But then you have eight countries that saw that king, that good king, get murdered by one of the people. And now it gives them the uh, inspiration or motivation to rebel against their own governments uh, or their own kingdoms. We don't know if those kingdoms were bad kingdoms now. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, okay, so out of those dozen countries, eight of them succeeded, but seven of them are still existing. Okay, which ones are good kingdoms? Like, which ones got ruled over? We don't know. Like, that's where it starts getting dangerous in the morality uh, compass. It's like, what what are we now doing as revs? And mm-hmm. what is Dragon's actual goal? And now this bring into Garp's, uh, Garp's also his gauge of morality. Like, this is why I joined the Marines. Mm-hmm. Because even <clears throat> though the Marines are corrupted and they are doing things of this nature that just seem evil, it's a better option than what you're doing. Because you're directly turning, he's he like Dragon could be the cataclysm that creates another twenty kingdoms to overthrow mm. the world government, <laughs> and now we have a whole new world government that acts the same way. Mm-hmm. And what? And does he change anything? No, he actually just restarts it. That's dangerous, bro. And like Sabo's on the wrong end of the spectrum, I think right now. It's funny you, you saying that made me think of like 
like you said, we don't know which kingdom now because of that is actually one of those noble kingdoms. For all you know, they could be scheming. It's like, I'm going to use this opportunity to take precise power myself. Yes. Right? You know, like mm-hmm. one separate thing, I'm going to use it and, like, even I have to take out Dragon and Saba or whatever, I'm going to seize the power and I'm going to rule. Like, you know? And with crew, just because we think of what's his name? Whirlpool? Wapo? Whatever? Wapo. Yeah. You don't think he would have to try to do that if he had the chance? He's not strong enough, but given an opportunity to try to seize the power of the world, he wouldn't do that. And Sabo's brother, mm-hmm. same. T- he would he would try to do that too. So then those people are not allied with the world government. But you don't know now again who's actually in there for the benefit of the world. And they don't care. That's mm-hmm. the thing. They don't care what countries it is. They yeah. just want more manpower in order to combat the current world government. Yeah. What you said actually reminded me of pretty much Crocodile's ambition. Him trying to be king of a kingdom. Like, what if there's a crocodile person in that kingdom who's trying to achieve it, and now this revolution revolution actually helps him become king. Like. Pretty much Crocodile couldn't do it because what happened with him. But now with all this going on, there's a person who's Crocodile level could actually become king of a kingdom now and do whatever he wants. Now we have another Doflamingo pretty much. Yeah. And, and this is where it gets to the, the, the Koza comparison in Alabasta. Was Koza right? Probably not. The way he was going about it was I've super dangerous too. Nobody's really right in One Piece, bro. Yeah. Exactly. There's always some element of yeah. wrong. So Every time. At the end of the day, it's like... You, you got to pick the lesser of two evils. Mm. And I don't necessarily believe that Dragon is the lesser of two evils. He might be the greatest evil to the world right now. Because there are, like, this is why we got so many mixed reactions, right? From when <clears throat> Cobra was, you know, assassinated. We saw some people in other towns crying. We saw other people in towns celebrating. But if we think about those people in the towns crying, they probably really have, like, great kingdoms that they live in. Mm-hmm. But now they're going to have to suffer because people are now going to rebel against their kingdom and mm-hmm. take over it, and then they might turn into another dress rosa. Yeah. Mm. Or, or not even thinking, like you said, nobody's safe. Like so, even the regions are getting taken out. So the revs might be backtracking. <laughs> mm. They might actually be creating more animosity towards them where it's going to make their job harder. And I think that's the message that, like, you know, I, I know I said it, but, like, Sabo needs to be careful if he's going to lead the next generation. <laughs> So I'm gonna need to die on me, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's get to the next one, and then we'll do super chats after, just because we got to push forward. Yeah. Uh, we head back a month ago to when Sabo and a few good men invaded Medijoa. We see on ex- we see an explosion and celestial dragons running in fear. Some of them want the heads of the revs for dis- desecrating their symbol and destroying their gourmet food supply too. Another celestial dragon is riding a slave and demanding he runs for him, but instead gets off to shoot. The slave, but before he does, Karasu swoops in to save the slave. A black bird tells the slave to run away. CP agents then shoot at Karasu, but it passes through him. Then we see a black smoke-like feature under the CP agent's feet, and he uses Absolutes, which takes out all the CP agents. He has the suit suit devil fruit. Lindbergh uses a laser gun to break the shackles of the prisoners. Lindbergh noticed an explosion in the distance and rushes towards it, and, notice, and Akatsu notices Fujitora. Then we see Morley fighting Green Bull, and a Celestial Dragon yells at Green Bull that if any of them get hurt, he'll be put to death. Fujitora tried to summon a meteor and has to stop it from raining down because there are Celestial Dragons in the area. CP0 are fully revealed, and we see all the previous CP9 agents. They say that the Admirals would have wiped the floor if they could go all out, too. And then we'll start with Seb. What did you think? All right, so I don't have much. Karasu is probably my favorite of the revs in general. I just like the crow stuff. Shout out the crows and worse. Um, <laughs> black fingernails, the whole shebang. He just looks cool. Um, I also love that Oda is still, to this day, not willing to have any random character hook off on a celestial dragon. <laughs> it's still just Luffy. It's still just Luffy. Yeah, word. It, you know what I mean? Like, we, he, he was in shot. prime position How to hook not off take that shot? on that celestial, and he didn't. Um, child to Fuji. Just like seeing <clears throat> Fuji at all times. Um, I don't remember how far you went with this, Larry. It went to the CP0 agents. But, so basically, the flashback is done. Okay, okay Besides the Sabo. Yeah, they, they're just reiterating to me, I think, is, is something that Oda wanted to do. Because, you know, Oda, is, he's relatively careful with how he scales and how he wants the community to look at people. He doesn't want to look at them. Like, Sabo and the, and the crew were successful here. But he doesn't want us to look at the admirals negatively. So he puts in extra panels to say, like, 
oh, this is why the Admirals didn't go all out. This is like the third time mm -hmm. he's essentially said it here in this situation. So like, it's just reiterating that fact. Um, and again, I'm, I'm an Admiral guy, and agenda piece always wins in the end. So um, I like that he did it. I don't think he needed to do it three times, though, or, or however many times he's done it. I think we got it. I think we got the gist. Um, I'll say this. I just Celestial Dragons, every time you see them on panel, you understand why you hate them so much. It's like, yo, there's people are saving you, and it's like, yo, kill yourself after. Mm -hmm. but it's like, yo, bro, like, shut up. <laughs> like, even Green, even Green Bull, you know what I'm saying? Like, Green Bull, the, the biggest Celestial supporter there is, was like, yo, get out of here. <laughs> like, leave me alone. <laughs> And Fuji being willing to call the meteor strike, like, low-key, he was like, oh, we can get them out of here too, right? Like, we can do that if it works. Um, I will say people have been bashing the Admirals for this. I, I don't I don't see that, but, like, I, I guess I get it. It's still not the best showing. Um, this, is, this is Morley and Karasu and Lindbergh. Like, yeah, I should be able to handle them without affecting the Celestials um, if y'all are really like that. So, like, Aokiji wouldn't probably have that problem. You know, but his doubt is a little different. But either way, Alkiji probably not having that problem. But I've always ranked uh, the original three a little stronger than the newer two. So it is what it is. It's also, 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 it's amazing. And yes, I mean amazing to see Jabra. I know I was hating on Kaku. You know what I'm saying? But Jabra, Chapapa, I don't remember their names exactly. Chapapa. But it's awesome to see the original CP. Nine agents chilling in their white. I didn't think I'd see Jabra again. I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. But when I saw him, I was happy. I was happy to see him. That's your, That's that Sanji fanboy. Ain't it's it? not even. I just thought, <laughs> I, the thing is, I thought his original outfit was dope. Like the the kung fu Ooh, guy yeah, 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 yeah. suit. Yeah. Like I thought his design was cool. I, I whatever, whatever with Kaku, whatever. Luigi looked cool. I thought he looked cool. He was a wolf. So <laughs> I was happy to see him. Plus the, the other two, the other four, Chapapa. Yayoi, Khalifa, Blue, they're always funny to me. Mm -hmm. So it's its just dope to see them as a whole. Yeah, Lawrence? Yeah, honestly, to me, I know people are using this to knock the Amaros. I wouldn't knock the Amaros. To me, it just gives us, for example, we all question based on how they look, the captains of the, of the revolutionaries, like how strong are they, you know? Because people are going to use that. I wouldn't knock the Amaros. Yeah, oh yeah, we all kind of favor that the original three are stronger, you know? I'm not going to name them because you know who they are. But to me, it's just like, these ones are showing that how because Sabo's not here. That's what impressed me. That you'll think, all right, Sabo's the one that pulled this train to victory, right? But they're out here fighting Admirals one on one. Yes, they have a handicap; they can't go all out with everything. But they wanted to, and they were going to with Cesar Dragons like interfere, like don't like stop, whatever, right? But it shows that they can kind of fight Admirals to a certain extent. Because to me, it's like right here, I don't know how many people look at it this way, but seeing the CCP zero. Here, yeah, they came back. Whatever, I ignored that. I thought, why aren't y'all fighting? To me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, why yeah. aren't y'all fighting? Do something. But to me, it could be I be reading too much into them not fighting. But to me, it's like maybe they were like, yo, we can't handle them. You like them, the captain levels. What if they're that strong? We're like, not saying that they're admiral level at all. But what if you need? Because like. They're good, obviously stronger than to me. I you know how I view the vice admirals now, but like, what is it you need al admiral level people to deal with them? Like maybe you could even say all right uh, a level of Rob Lucci and Kaku to deal with them, right? But them they're not strong because they're not fighting at all, not even a little bit. You know they're all just standing together. And they said they would have to four with them, but he also says here that the business uh, the the captains are all serious business, right? And they're all weird, so they're knowing that yo they're they're strong though. Like, the, uh, even though they're, um, they're handicapped, but they're putting up a good fight against them, right? And I actually just want to tag up one thing, because I'm going to end it here, what I just said about that. To me, I just wanted to show the strength that I saw with the captains. Because uh, I, I the one that knocked them when I first saw them, but to me, it's like, they're actually a lot stronger than I thought. But, interesting point you brought out, and I was thinking about it too, about the Celestial Dragons thing. How you only had Luffy hit him, right? No, another time, the only other person that hit a Celestial Dragon was Law. What is Law? A D, just like Luffy. Right, so now we only have only D's hitting Celestial Dragons, Doflamingo and that one. Does Dofi count? Yeah, because the reason Does why Dofi count, bro. Because the reason why I bring it up is what Crozon said to Law: the Celestial Dragons' natural enemy 
is the D clan. Does right? Dolphy count? And though? now we and I'm thinking, I, yeah, he does count. It's not the same. Yeah, it is the same. <laughs> swinging on Dolphy is not the same as swinging on Special like, Dragon. But I'm thinking, but no, but swinging the, on Dolphy, but Dolphy, Dolphy, not coming Dolphy on you. has not got hit by anybody. I'm not just swinging on him. He has not got hit by anyone except for Luffy or Law. Yeah. Only two Ds. So like right here, I think Oda was trying to tell us something right here. The natural enemies, you know, the only ones that we that put hand on Celestial Dragons are only D clan members. We got one more question after this. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, who's next, Lionel? Well, off that you're right, but you're also wrong. When they were kids, Rosante and Dolphin were getting hit when they were kids. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, never mind. When they were poor, but I, but I get, I get feel what you're saying. Um, but also, I want to think: is it, is it weird that Dolphin, Mingo, and Rosante are the only not ugly people? <laughs> like, hey yo, yo man, like I, all of them are really Lionel, ugly. Lionel, 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 beauty's in the eye of the beholder, bro. Bro, you see them. They keep <laughs> so, there's them, bro. somebody out there. I'm just saying. Somewhere. I'm they sure look different, bro. They look different. But um, it's just years of insight. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but um, but I th- thought it was like seeing that get clarification that um, Kairosu has an ability that it's actually a Lagi ability, not um, not a Zoan, which probably you all thought. We all know that, huh? We don't know. Yeah, what, what, how, what, what the suit, he, suit fruit. He, he looked it up. Yeah, look it up. It's like pretty much the the black ash thing from fire. Cool, bro. Wait, that's wait, a wait, wait, Oh, 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 what? Yeah, yeah they. It, it, it's not confirmed to be a logia. But but that's kind of an element thing. Did that's it say logia on the thing? No, it didn't. But like that's not. And plus, he got shot up and it went through him. I don't I mean, mean anything. I, I saw, you know, Katakuri. But that, he's a paramecia. I know. He could because very they, well be a logia. I'm just saying. He could I be know. a logia. Because Lionel's also adding the fact that it's not just crows because he also made swords. So it's like he could shape yeah. it to anything he wants. Like his his crows. theme is crows. I, I, likes crows. I saw Kata yeah. Curry shoot his arm off, bro, and yeah. I get you, but his name was Curse, which I think they said. I'm going to crows I'm in Japanese. Just accept it, like, Lionel, he's that crow theme. I get you, but you're wrong. No, it's not wrong. No, you're not wrong. It's not confirmed. Maybe it is confirmed, bro. It's on the wiki. No, it's not confirmed. It's not a wiki, though. Lot, I'm with you, bro. I, I, he's a lot of you, I bro. accept a lot of you. And he's <laughs> moving like a lot of you. Like, he had him slid behind bro. under the feet. The revs got too long. Kata Curry, bro. <laughs> like, again. <laughs> but he's a pair of mission. We're like, staying this. too long on this. Keep going, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> but. but I was thinking, though, too, that he actually might have three loggers. If Dragon's a loggier, too, as well. Now you open up a whole nother. I mean, <laughs> but he's wind. That's good. That's another thing. But it's difficult because wind being a loggier, that's kind of crazy. But, um,. But again, I again, Curse, I do like him. Like I'm not saying he's my favorite Revs, but like he's he's and it also seems like he was actually taking command, like telling Lindbergh what to do in a way. I think like he was taking command. Like is is there a ranking as in like Saab was the chief person and now who's the next? Because we know Vankov and Kuma, they're like you know they're the the original um like you know origin of the Revs. But is Karasu like the fifth? Kind of guy because he was telling Limburg what to do because like, he was really taking command and like you know he was also had the same energy as Sabo like we're trying to get things done like we're trying to do this so I, I thought it was cool um, but also again I like the um, the concept of seeing more of the Rebs and their abil- their abilities and also again it's a lot harder defending your own um, city or town when it's getting attacked because like the Main Ford War like we know that Amos didn't go out in the Main Ford War when they're fighting the, the Whitebeard um, pirates, because we saw like what Aokiji and Akana could do. They could turn a whole island into their into their ability. We didn't see that at the Marineford War. How much more so at Marine Jordan? This is the this is where the Ten people live at. So you can tell they're they're really handicapped, like seriously in this fight. So there's not much we could do. Like I'm not even surprised that Fujitora was even going to throw down a meteor. But also I'm also kind of weird that Fujitora is actually with the um, with the word government. Because if you look at Fujitora's personality, it kind of contradicts what the Tenjibito are. Because Fujitora is with the people. Yeah. And they clearly don't give any cares about the people at all. They don't. Like, so it's like kind of interesting. What, like, it's not Fujitora's like a GARP, but he has more of a GARP mentality. But he's with the, uh, with the revolutionary, which, um, with the world government trying to help them. So I thought that was kind of also kind of weird. Um, and again, I thought it was pretty dope again seeing... Um, the revolutions in their abilities. I don't leave it at that. All right. Uh, yeah. Karasu might be a special uh, paramecia. Or he could be a, or he could be a Logia. He could be either or, and that's cool. Uh, Lindbergh confirmed to have lasers. Uh, very Laser interesting. Uh, wonder what that could mean. 
uh, for the future of his scientific abilities and him being connected probably to Vegapunk. Mm. Uh, Karasu immediately rushing towards uh, Fujitora was gangster. Mm-hmm. It really showed that he's definitely that type of character to take on somebody like Fuji without anybody's help. So he has to be so much strong. Um, I think it's very weird. I, I haven't heard anything about people saying the admirals look weak because of this. Um, no? Nah, because... It's been out here, bro. I mean, it's the same consensus that everybody came to when Sabo invaded the land and we didn't hear about the details of it, right? Like, I've always assumed that, yeah, the, the admirals had to hold back because the celestial yeah. dragons are there. You can't yeah. just start hockey clashing <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> start like... Knocking you know, you start knocking <laughs> celestials out. Like, yeah. you just can't do that. If yeah. you did that, I assumed that one of the celestial dragons would most likely be like, yo, you hurt me. Mm-hmm. All right, put this guy to death. Yeah. yeah. And then that was exactly what happened. And mm-hmm. I've said this before on the pod. I was like, yo, this is most likely what happened. Y'all calling out the admirals like they weak. Admirals aren't as strong as Yonko to me. But they're not weak enough to get bodied by Sabo and a few good men like this. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. I assumed the battlefield was in favor of the Revs just because the Celestial Dragons can say put the, that person to death. But if they said it to, like, an admiral, you immediately lose power within your system. Mm. So them doing, like, Green Bull being told that by a Celestial Dragon was all, like, I, I looked at it and I was like, another dub that I got, right? <laughs> Um, but I, w- I would say, like, just seeing Chapa Ba, who's, like, my favorite CP9 <laughs> member, uh, seeing Jabra, uh, Jabra literally brought back, um, how Queen looks for me, because Queen has the ponytail, he has the yeah, long yeah, yeah. beard, and he has, like, you know, he just looks like Queen, and it's funny that Sanji and yeah. fought both of these guys that look very similar, and they both have Zoan Devil Fruits, mm-hmm. so I, I, I was like, yo, that's crazy that Jabra kind of foreshadowed Queen, um, because Queen was also the second strongest between his commanders, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Jabra was supposedly the second strongest uh, with, like, Luchi and Kaku. Like, he had the highest Doraki or something like that before Luchi took off, and then Kaku gained his double so, fruit ability. So Luchi and Jabra were rivals. Yeah, They were like, rivals. Where, where yeah. Luchi was very clearly stronger than him. Uh-huh. And then, like, Kaku ended up having a higher Doraki than Jabra. And he was like, wait, what? Not as BS. And it's like, oh, you was... I was training. Oh, bro. okay, yeah. 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 So it was just interesting, but it shows that both characters are kind of stupid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. To the final subject before we get into everything else. Uh, finally, we see Sabo trying to free Kuma. Charlos is seen to not have given up on capturing Princess Shirahoshi. Luchi is shown trying to protect Vivi, but she tells him he couldn't protect Shirahoshi from the Celestial Dragon, so why would he protect her? And then Cobra is brought by Pell to the Gorosei room with his boy and tells them, uh, and then Cobra tells them to go back to Vivi. He doesn't want them to get bored. Uh, Seb? Always good to see my girl Vivi. I know I used to hate her so much. Yeah, oh, my <laughs> I, oh my y'all, y'all have no idea how much I hated <laughs> Vivi. And then the second she didn't join the crew, she became a favorite for me. <laughs> so it's good to see her, honestly. And also good to see Cobra, man. I, it's weird. It's weird. I don't know if it's the first chapter ever. We saw a character lying deceased earlier in the chapter, yeah. Yeah. and then we saw them alive and well later in the chapter. Well, you said live and well. I don't know. About I that. mean, damn. <laughs> He's in a, a wheelchair, wheelchair, bro. You can be in a wheelchair and be alive and well, bro. Okay. All right. Damn. <laughs> Jeez. He's coughing. Um. Also... I'm just happy we didn't see Pell's face because I'd have punched my screen, bro. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all know, y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. Z- Zoan ability. It's, it's beef, bro. It's, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> I love Oda. Pell should be gone. I will never not think that. I don't care what he does in this arc. <laughs> Pell should have went in Alabasta. Well, I mean, he, I don't care, Lawrence. He no. I do not care. He might have killed himself after Cobra died. You know? Listen, I hope he did, bro. Damn. Listen, even if he did, okay. I'd, just be, I'd, I'd be more mad. Okay. Because then we really had no reason. <laughs> yeah. For him to be alive. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. But that's it. That's it for me. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Shout out to to Cobra. Port Dragon still should have poured one out. Lawrence. I'm trying to kill people, especially. I'm not trying to. They Let people live. You talk about Lino. Let people live. Anyway, um, I actually didn't have much for this section. 
uh, in all honesty, it made me laugh that like uh, how Rob Lucci got offended by it. It's like, dude, you were clearly laughing and like letting uh, <laughs> Shira Hoshi get like you know kidnapped and everything, and then she Vivi huh? huh? What? 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 Huh? Huh? what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm here to protect you. Talk about Man, shut up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, his face is all sour. It's like I can't with you, Rob Lucci. You're a jerk. But anyway, um, but like I like how Vivi because she's smart and. To me, I wonder how this plays out because, like, with the Garp, because she's going, she's, I guess she's looking for Garp, but then, you know, we know Citra versus Vivi's right now, you know? Like, because I'm curious how everything plays out, what we saw, because we saw, this is the uh, flashback. We saw where, because uh, we see, even see Bonnie here. We saw where Bonnie ended up, right? We see uh, we see Vivi here. We saw where Vivi ended up, right? And then Cobra's, like, <laughs> like dead and everything. Yeah. And this is a... Uh, to me, it's like Cobra. I don't know how well you know. <laughs> um, uh, I guess the Slusher Dragons are all of them. But it's like you really went there without any guard at all. Not that I don't know if they're strong enough to really defend. You know, I don't know who took Zabba, um, took Cobra out. But like you went there in like your weakest moment because you're you know you, you're you're older and I don't know why you're in a wheelchair. Cause I don't remember what, what happened to you to put you in there. Maybe it's old age. But you went there without your guard, and then it ended up costing you your life. You know. Cause I think if they would have went with your guards, you would have, like, like uh, I guess, protected you. Unless Vivi sparked something that caused Cobra's death. It could also be that, you know? Because I think him saying that could also play into that, too. But I didn't really have much here. Um, right. Saab was just doing work. But, yeah. Lano? Um, I think it was, again, seeing um, Kuma and um, Bonnie together, again, in a weird way. Um, I know Kuma's not looking good. And she's, but I also want to. I'm waiting for the reveal of what what role Bonnie played in this incident. Like you know, because we we we're focused on the rabbits and the world government and the and the animals, but we're forgetting Bonnie. Like, because Ken, she was there to help her dad, and now whatever happened, the rabbits took her dad away. We don't know if they even got to meet each other. So like, I'm waiting for like what happened in this moment with um with Bonnie and her father, because we know what's happening right now with Bonnie going into Kuma's memories. You know, and trying to find out what's going on and why. And her revenge off Vegapunk about her dad turning back to normal. Um, pretty much, uh, I, I don't have that much either. Um, but, you know, it was cool to see Cobra, um, Cobra again alive. But, again, I, I'm also trying to figure out, I'm interested in the meeting with her, um, with the, what they're going to talk about and what will revolve to his death. So I'm just going to keep it short right there. Um, yeah. Um, I think Charles is the Celestial Dragon that uh, was almost assassinated. When Mule's guard had to let that person go. Oh, yeah. I think it might have been Bonnie or Sabo. Um, that's how they got Kuma and was able to take his collar off and mm-hmm. take him back. Um, I love the Vivi just telling straight up Lucci, like, yo, you couldn't protect your Hoshi, bro. Like, you can't protect me. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. are you bugging? And it is weird that Lucci was, like you said, happy, and then now he's, like, upset. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never had me. You never had your car. You never had your car. <laughs> It just shows how weak-willed Lucci is. To <laughs> um, Lucci slander all day. But I, do, but I do have something interesting that you guys might find. Uh, it might spark your curiosity. So we see that Cobra is going to talk either to the Gorosei or something. I'm assuming he's going to talk to the Gorosei, right? By mm-hmm. himself. Mm-hmm. I think that he walks in or he rolls in and he doesn't actually see the Gorosei. He actually ends up talking to Emu. And what I think happens is that since the Nefotari were a part of the 20 kingdoms, but they chose to stay down on land with the commoners, right? Mm -hmm. There's always been a feud between the 20 kingdoms and the Nefotaris themselves. Yeah. And I think what happened is, I think this is also a foreshadow that when we saw Cobra and he knew about the pony glyph, and he knew about what the readings meant and what it kind of said. That's a foreshadow to him probably knowing something about, I don't want to say exactly what he knows, but he probably just knows something about the 20 kingdoms, or he probably knows who Emu is himself. So he's like, yo, this is finally the time to take him out or something like that, you know? And I think what happens is Cobra rolls in the, into there, and... He asks him probably something specific, like a question that we just don't know just yet. And he's like, yo, uh, I just wanted to know this. Like, what's going on with this? And then Emu's like, yo, every, you know, since I'm going to murk you anyway, I'm going to tell you. He obviously tells him. 
And then what ends up happening is somebody shoots Cobra. Sabo sees the conversation between Emu and Cobra, and that's how he knows that there's somebody that stands above the Gorose. Mm -hmm. That's how he knows that there's somebody that sits in that chair. And then when he goes to check on Cobra, Cobra's already dead, and that's how that picture gets taken. Because mm -hmm. there's no other way for... There's no other way for Sabo to see Emu and be in the same area as uh, Cobra. Right. So I think that's currently what's going to happen in the story. That's going to be the eventuality of, yo, this is why Cobra is dead. And I think that Cobra knows that going in because he's already telling Pell and Chaka, yo, just go back to Vivi. I don't want you to get bored. Mm -hmm. So I think he knows already that he's, he's going, going to die eventually, but he's just going to die now. The reason for it, I don't know why though. Yeah. So I think that's gonna be revealed too. Yeah, I actually forgot about that too because they like you know, they called them like the girls say called Cobra and that family traitors, right? Yeah, they called yeah traitors. So it's like they view them just for not going with the because they should would be with Celestial Dragons, but they called them traitors for not going with See, them. I wonder if that's specifically why he got clipped. Mm, like yeah. Emu, whatever the conversation was, the Emu was just like, you know what, man, you enough Atari. You are up. <laughs> like, just straight yeah. up. I was actually thinking, like, this actually might be, with Cobra dying, they actually might I was about to say that. one of the Holy Knights. Oh. One of the Holy Knights could have killed um, Cobra. That's, that's, that's what I was going to say, too. So the thing is, though, but Cobra's not strong. No, I'm not, you know what I mean? It's, 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 but, yeah. but it can still be hype, but he's not, he said, unless he did it some crazy way. I was like, he's probably doing it because they policed them, and yeah. he's anyway considered one, and not really Celestial Dragon. But it also, if they, if they, the the knowledge, because I think it's common knowledge that they're one of the kingdoms from that thing, that's probably why they they were kind of happy that Cobra died. It's like, mm -hmm. well, he was one of them anyway. You know, not only were you like uh, uh, part of that affiliate, but you were kind of like a Celestial Dragon, but just you just didn't go up there. You yeah. Know? So mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. But um, Marv, you can hit that sponsorship. Yeah. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you been struggling lately? Maybe you're having trouble sleeping, difficulty with a relationship, or just struggling from low self-esteem. Listen, I've been there. We've been there. If so, then today's BetterHelp wants to help you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you. Talk to your therapist in a private, online environment at your own convenience. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000-plus therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire, simple as that, to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. Then you schedule a secure video and phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages and everything you share is completely confidential. I happened to sign up at one point regarding my confidence issues. Next thing you know, my confidence issues are not issues anymore. I'm doing pretty well in that area. You can request a new therapist at no additional charge anytime. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Special offer goes out to all that One Piece Talk listeners. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash T-O-P-T. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash T-O-P-T. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. And we're back. Uh, real quick, we'll run through a couple of super chats that have been sitting for a while. We got a $5 super chat from Jordan Meads. It says, Cobra was in on the plot. Alabasta was a part of the revolution. I don't know about that. I don't think he was trying to get murdered. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He got a daughter. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if he was trying to get murdered like that. Uh, we got, unless he's talking about Alabaster, but I don't think he was in on that either. Um, we got another five dollar super chat from Sloppy. It says Steli is going to take over the world after the government falls. Um, that would be terrible. If they if they kill Vega Bunk, she would. Steli is a guy. One. Oh, I'm thinking Sussy. Sabo's brother, bro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm thinking I, of Sussy. The problem with Steli taking over the world nah. is the fact that it wouldn't be different 
from what we see right yeah, now. Yeah, so I don't think I don't think Stelly does it. Um, He's too much of a clown. I view him. We as. got another two from Stroud. It says, "Dang, I miss Cobra. Pour out a little liquor." Yeah, man. Shout out to Tupac. Um, <laughs> pour out a little liquor for the homie Cobra. Mm. Uh, we got another super chat. Five dollars, and I'm glad Larry's back here for this one. It says, "At that One Piece talk, who do you guys believe is the weakest emperor of the sea in One Piece after Buggy?" And Sebastian. I know you. Please don't be biased. <laughs> we got to be quick. It's Blackbeard. Blackbeard. Yeah, Blackbeard. I'm going to go Luffy. Of course you would go Luffy. I'm going to go Luffy. I'm still... I got Blackbeard stocks. All right. Because you're a troll. Listen, man. I'm going to go Luffy. <laughs> we got another $5 from TX Mugiwara. It says, do you guys think Cobra went into the room with a Gorosei knowing he may die? How long do you think Dragon can hold food from going to Mary Joa? Larry like literally just answered this question. Yeah, the first, the first one. one. And possibly, so I say it's possible. Uh, I don't know how long. I mean, I don't know how long it'll take to, to bring food up there. Well, so giant place. I think if anything, they'll get to the, the, the uh, emergency supplies from the Marines, and Dragon yeah. can't stop that. He can stop the yeah. governments, but he can't. I mean, the countries, yeah. but he can't stop the Marines. So. Green Bull can make something for. Him. Um, yeah. We also got a three month membership to Knock on Status from I Hate Mo. It says, "Congrats on 100 episodes, gang! Y'all the goats for real." Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank I hate Mo. Um, finally getting his name right consistently. Uh, we got another one month membership to Nakama status from Nine Hundun. <laughs> Hundun. Uh, not related, but post time skip Gear Four Luffy FMI versus FMI Zoro. I don't know what FMI means. So I got Luffy over Zoro in general. So I don't. I don't know FMI. what FMI means. But either way, you said this is Luffy what and Zoro what? Is that it? That's it. All right. So uh, let's do. Yeah, let's do your we get gift. the calls, let's we'll do your get gift first. Gifts. Uh, we did get a gift from Project Gray, uh, Graybeard. Thank you so much, man. Uh, gift for the hundred episodes. I can't get to it. Ah! Yeah. Jeez, I might. I don't even know what this is exactly. It's a lot. I think I know what it is. It's a lot in here. It's a treasure chest. Oh. It's a treasure chest. Hold on, don't I open do. it yet. Show it to the people, it's a, bro. It's a treasure chest, right? I don't... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, man. I hope there's like a big dildo Is in there. Right? Come oh, on, no. bro. No. <laughs> no. It's like, no. okay, all right. Um... Oh yeah, it's part. It's the Monopoly set. It's piece. It's part of the Monopoly set itself. Oh, yeah. it's part oh, of. Yeah. It. I thought you said it was for your birthday. I don't know, man. Oh, so the your, the whole birthday thing was for your. I don't know, bro. but yeah, this thing is awesome. This is crazy. This is awesome. This is like a. I, I know you guys can't see it, but it's his logo. Yo, it's the Buster what called that there, Mushi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It yeah, has his awesome. it has his bounty on it, and these are the cards that come with it. Oh my god. This yeah, is man. crazy. Yeah, even these. They're, they're dice. They're straw hats. Like yeah, this the dice has straw Wait, hats on it. These yeah, are look. straw hats? Yeah. There's Zolo, Luffy, and I saw Frankie. Bro, how did you create this? Dude, this is everything. And what's also dope here with like, uh, Sebastian saying how... Like, that's Zolo right there. Yeah. The, the money he made, Sebastian? <laughs> This wow. one's got to be for Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him about the, um, the belly. Yeah, so yeah, the dope funny. thing about this is the Monopoly money is actually belly or berries from the, the One, One Piece. Piece manga. So it's the actual, like, what they're printed on or what they look like when they're actually printed. So it's like one... Uh, 5, 20, 100, 500. It's amazing. Yeah. Bro, uh, there's, a couple, there's a couple of here. There's another treasure chest. There's two treasure chests. The red card. The red cards are from The red wrapping. The red wrapping? Oh, was it Marco? Oh, did you take it out? Wait, the red wrapping? A, wait, look at the. Yeah, is there something oh. there? Oh, snap. Yeah. Oh, this, this is, one's me. Yeah. Okay. I know, yeah, it's probably. No, that's the. Oh, yeah, this is the card game that he was talking oh, about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this thing's awesome. Ah, it's going to fall. But, no, you're, yeah, wait, did, you, did you open the tread, uh, the chest? The I green one? this one, and it had um, these black pieces on it. Tiles. Oh, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This I, is nutty, bro. Bro, I love the, amazing. the presentation. Bro, how do you... Graybeard, bro. You created all of this? This is amazing, bro. Yeah, it really, it really is. 
There's there's papers that explain yeah. everything. Great, I dope. can't read, bro. Yo, this is dope. Because even this, the dice that have pictures on them. They have the pictures of all, of all like a bunch of characters in the One Piece world, and the dice has a skull. Yo, but not even it? that. Like he has like on these tile, like the the Monopoly cards. Yeah. He has like Alvida's hideout. You guys can't see it, obviously. <laughs> but this is insane. Yeah. yeah. And it has like the little houses and stuff, and the dice. This is extremely dope. Like, oh, the I'm pieces are for checkers. The pieces are for checkers. Oh, yeah. I, I assumed it. Hold on. So they, he has like this really big thing too. Hold on. Like, I'm 100% impressed. Yeah, Listen, seriously. I could never have made it. And yeah. he did it so fast, too. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's been made since forever. He just shifted to us really fast. So, like, because it wasn't, like, last episode he... Yeah, like, it was he... last episode. Bro, this is made out of real wood. <laughs> <laughs> what the... Yeah, you gotta show the people, bro. Yeah, yeah hold on. <laughs> this is crazy. This is nuts. Oh man, bro! You guys don't understand. This, is, <laughs> this monopoly thing is about to be so epic. Bro. Yeah, we playing tonight. <laughs> Yo, we got nothing to do. I'm down. Yo, that's pretty wild. Wow! Look at that, Yo. bro. So, from what Greybeard oh told God. me, this is um Luffy's pre time skip journey, right? So it'll start at like Fuchsia Village or Alavita's hideout, and it goes all the way through. To like, yo, can I bring this closer to the camera? <laughs> you guys see yo. This? yo, it's amazing, man. Yeah, it's amazing. It's awesome. And it's well, featured on the right, Yonkos. Put it on the left camera? Yeah. There you go. So it's featured on the Yonkos themselves, right? So, like, the railroads are like Shanks and, and Black, uh, Whitebeard and Kaido and Big Mom. So it's the pre time skip Yonko. So, like, it's super awesome. It looks amazing. He's sending me texts really about it. Good. Listen, I can't wait to play that. Yo, I this really is can. crazy. Yo. I really can't. Yep. So, so the crazy thing about this is he has the the manga panels. Yeah. From the colored manga panel. Yo, this thing is heavy. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Yo, yo, you got talent, my brother. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, got yeah, talent, listen, bro. Excellent Hi, job. This Phenomenal is so, job. So much work. Can so I, I'll, can I'll say this. Like more of it? From what I've seen, the One Piece actual Monopoly games, they're nowhere near this level of thought yeah. into mm. it at mm. all. Okay. So. Shout out to Greybeard, yes, man. Yes, definitely. I, I, I don't know he what has, else like, to say. He has Jaya, Jasta, he has Skypea. We're getting uh, super chats. A Thousand Sunny. He has Driller Bard, Sapaori. He has, like, the where the train stations are. He has, like, the previous Yonko gems. Yo, this is nutty, dog. Oh. He was just... Oh, oh, can y'all hear Larry? I don't even know if y'all can hear Larry. Oh, but you he can't pretty, hear me? I, I don't, I, they probably could. They oh, probably okay. could. Vaguely. This is amazing. It's, yeah. Thank it's you. next yeah. level, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is crazy. Yo, we where, gotta play. Where are we storing this? The, I saw, I mean, one of the Super Chats. <laughs> That's the question. You, heard, you read one of the Super Chats? I sure? haven't read any of the Super Chats, my bad. One of them said, um, I said a suggestion. What did you read? What, was it the break week one? Yeah. Yeah. To play the Monopoly on the break week? I mean, if we can. I mean, we would have to ask more. Yeah, and he gave us all the directions, too. Bro, Listen. this is crazy. Yeah, this is yeah, I amazing. haven't played I Monopoly even... in a minute. Yeah. Word. And I'm I'm ready, bro. I'm down. I don't I'm always so play down. Monopoly, this but when I do. Nuts. I play the one <laughs> piece of Monopoly. <laughs> that that, that, that Greybeard sounds. Yeah. Excellent job, Greybeard. Yeah. Yo, Greybeard, thank you so thank much. That's like high-level work. This is, yeah. this is yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 Seriously, W's for Greybeard yeah, in the chat, please. Can we get some W's in the chat? W's for Greybeard, please. That's crazy. He was showing it to me, and I was like, yo, that's crazy. But then, like, when you view it in person, it's yeah, so it's much, different. it's, like, the quality is just crazy that's up there. amazing. I was going to say put it out there in the front, but whatever. Yeah, it, can't, it wouldn't be able we to see think? it. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get into calls, Marv. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> we I think we got two Super Chats. Uh, did we? Okay, yeah. We got, um... Were people in the chat liking it? Yeah, they're saying fire, bro. It's amazing. Yeah. I don't know how you can not like it. Yeah, seriously. We got two dollars for shot. It says Marco goes on the background shelf, big dog. Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that one piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Yo, this is Andrew. Hey, what's yeah, up, yeah, Andrew? Yeah, what's up? I was doing good. Congrats on one hundred episodes. Ah, oh, thank you, brother. Thank Appreciate you. that. Uh, oh yeah, no problem. I was one shout out. It's like shout out to Marv because he always be helping with these episodes. 
Oh, Marv? Um, yeah. yeah. He, be, he be doing his <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, I just gotta give a shout out because he, because just to help out. Yeah, what's up though, man? Yeah, nothing much. So, this is just one question. This is kind of a fun one, but for Larry, when was the moment you decided, like, man, I really hate Buggy? <laughs> <laughs> like, I just can't stand this clown. <laughs> when was the moment? Oh, or man. Just like, any moment you're just like, I can't stand this guy. Why is he on this series? I think I think when we saw him again and then fell down. <laughs> I think that was it. I, th- I would think the fans did it to you. No, <laughs> the fans weren't doing that to me. No, like hyping Buggy up. Yeah. Nah, yeah. no, nah, no. Nah. It was literally an impel down. Like, yeah. I didn't like the return of him. Mm. And then, like, right. he, he garnered all this strength, and that's when it... Like, I, I started to notice that Usopp and Buggy were, like, the same character. Like, they both do the same things. Yeah. So I was like, damn, there's, like, a, a copycat of Usopp out there, and I really don't mess with Usopp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, just just like a few things to know just before I just leave. I don't want to like take up too much time, but uh-huh. you know, Chapa, he kind of got the drip. He got the Lauren sunglasses. Who? Uh, oh, Chapa, like the. Oh, Chapa, right. he's, he's rock. Right. Fukuro. I, I, Fukuro. I don't remember. It's Fukuro. 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 Yeah. 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 yeah he got like Lauren sunglasses. <laughs> oh, he does. Yeah, he does. He looks like uh, one of those like mid two thousands Mission Impossible characters. I told him not to tell anyone my secret. Huh? Yeah, yo, I, yo, he's my favorite CP uh, yo, nine bye agent. Bye. Like, I don't know, like him banging out with Frankie. I was such a huge fan of Frankie during Water Seven and Ennis Lobby, and how he just like, you know, like conducted himself and what he was doing. And then they started like brawling now, and I was just like, yo, and then Chapa Pa was just doing like ill stuff. Yeah, like like he he almost beat Frankie. So, I don't know. I was always a huge fan of him. So, I'm glad he's back, yo. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I get to say chop up off. That's like one, <laughs> of, the yeah. That's like one yeah. of the things I like. You gotta understand, yeah. me and Larry bonded over One Piece because of chop up <laughs> Like, that was part of the reason. Yeah, he like, used to have me he guys. was so right. like, yo, this is hilarious. Nah, yeah. <laughs> it's very old to his character because he's supposed to be like, legit has a zipper for a mouth. Like, yeah. the most well-kept secrets. But he would tell everybody secrets. Yeah! yeah. That That's was hilarious. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing was, we never, like, Never got like a uh, consensus as to why he has a zipper. Mark. <laughs> right? Is it his race? Yeah. It's like, is, 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 is he, he a double fruit? fruit? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, that's a, just a flashback to a different time, man. Yeah. I was like in high school. It yeah. Was a good time. yeah, that was good. But Andrew, thank you so much for calling. Yeah, man. thank you. Uh, oh yeah, no problem, man. Yo, just congrats, congrats on the success of the channel. Uh, oh, thank, thank you, you brother. Man. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, have a good day. Yeah, you, you too. too. Nice. Later. So you know how the dice has numbers? It has the order. It has the, the straw hats in order, right? Put in real effort, man. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ooh. what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Nick. Nick! Hey, Nick. What's, what's up, on? bro? Yo, yeah. Nick has started the wire, bro. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> He's on like season three. What's up, Nick? Yo, I'm going to just be honest. I got no question. I got no theory. I just want to call up, say congrats for 100. Oh, thank you, man. Been here. So, hey. I'm not going to take up the line for too long. I'm going to try to let Broker in here because I know uh, there's some fire. <laughs> so, I just had to get a call in, you know. No, like, we appreciate that. Nick, so, man, it's good to hear your voice, man. Seriously. Yeah, I'll, I'll see y'all later. All right, All right. See thank you. Later. you. Have a good night. Love, enjoy, enjoy yourself. I was that. quick with the hangover on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's going on? This is live from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Hello? Hello, hello. Moshi Mosh. Mosh Mosh. Mosh Mosh. Bro, let's go. Bro, what's up? I'm great. How are you? We're good, man. Get to your theory, bro. Excellent. Right, yeah, congrats on 100, by the way. Thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, so as Larry knows, I think that the final fight between uh, Luffy and Blackbeard is going to be in several stages. So I think the last thing that happens is that it's literally, they're on Laugh Tale and it's a race to the One Piece. And that we'll see the two crews fight each other to start with. And that it'll be uh, almost like a battle royale. I don't think it's going to be 
one versus one and nobody else gets involved. For example, I think there's going to be quite a bit of crossover between Zoro and with um, Sanji, both fighting Shiryu and Burgess, in my opinion. And I think that as that goes on, once the Straw Hats finally beat all of the Blackbeard pirates, we go to Luffy versus Blackbeard, and Blackbeard can't run anymore. He's literally boxed in. He knows he's going to have to fight. And Luffy is just absolutely wrecking him. He he doesn't stand a chance. It's completely one-sided. The Straw Hats turn up, and um, when I say, like, Beat, they are completely shattered. There's no way they can even get up to be able to join in no matter what. They're, they're not going to be able to help Luffy, not that he needs help. Uh, Blackbeard's going to realize then that his crew have been defeated and he's completely, you know, just on his own. So I think that's when he, you, again, using whatever ability it is that lets him take someone else's devil fruit, he takes all of his crew's devil fruits, every single one. Whether that means he has to kill them or whatever, I don't think he cares. He's just completely desperate. So he takes all their devil fruits, and it's only that ability where Blackbeard has every fruit power they have that makes it so that he's able to fight Luffy to a, almost like a stalemate. And that if you look at all the different abilities that the um, Blackbeard pirates have, a lot of them combined in different ways give Blackbeard a way to counter certain things Luffy can do. Like I was saying to Larry, um, a combination of um, the warp fruits and being able to fly means that, and sorry, and being invisible means that he can keep up with Luffy's future sight. So he can warp around at whatever the limit is to that speed and be invisible. So that's the sort of way that it makes it so that he's able to almost get one over on Luffy so that it all comes down to Blackbeard with all these devil fruits. He needs all of that just to be able to fight Luffy to a standstill. Yeah, I love it. Yo, 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 listen. That's fire. Yo. That's fire because one, it just shows Blackbeard who he is. Like, he would would snake all these people to achieve his great dream. Every single one of them. So I love that. Like, everybody's always talking about what Blackbeard's next devil fruit would be. What if it's just Eight other double fruits? <laughs> like, that would be crazy. Oh, I, I, no, I totally think that the next fruit he's going to get is going to be the um, Mellow Mellow fruit. It's going to be Boa's fruit. But like I told you before, I think it's actually a uh, mythical Zoan snake snake fruit mm. model Medusa. And that he's using that. But he gets it from um, York. Who I, so we know Blackbeard's heading to um, Egghead. I think that he's heading there to uh, basically acquire um, the green blood, and he's gonna. So he can still get um, Boa's fruit without Boa having to die in the story. Mm. So I think that. But I think the downside to that will be that later on in the story. So we know that if you turn someone to stone with Boa's fruit, even if she dies, they stay turned to stone. I think that the caveat for him using green blood instead is that when. Blackbeard eventually dies, all the people that he's turned to stone turn back. So that it's almost as good as Boa's fruit, but not quite as good as the original. You know why I love this theory? And I'll, I'll tell you right right now. You know, I just I just watched a video from Parr uh, about Blackbeard, and it's a whole hour around Blackbeard. And it makes sense. Like, Parr went in a direction that made Blackbeard seem incredible. But, again, theories don't always mean that they're true even if they connect right like they just don't go in the right direction even though it seems like it and basically what he was saying is one of the things that blackbeard does is that he gets hit on purpose in order to understand the other person and their abilities that's why he always gets hit so he uses advanced future sight in order to see the hit and make sure it doesn't kill him and then he understands his opponent and then beats him that way so there's some way of understanding the will inside of the devil fruit or understanding how the devil fruit works overall, right? And I, there's more to it, but I just couldn't believe it because I'm like, yo, the mental gymnastics of making Blackbeard somehow this <laughs> overpowered being from the jump, even though nothing no, says that it is, not, right? No, he's not overpowered. He's just a chump. He's the way he's <laughs> got to where he is. So much of it has been taking shortcuts and getting lucky. Exactly. Like, he's the complete... He's the complete opposite of Luffy. Luffy puts in the work for mm-hmm. every single ability he's had. He's earned every single one. Whereas Blackbeard, he's just turned up, taken an ability, and run. Exactly. And that's what I wanted to point out, is that most people don't understand Blackbeard's character. They just understand that 
the position he's going to be at will eventually come. So they think he's there already. And that's my point from the very get go, Mm -hmm. where Broker is literally saying, yes, hockey does matter, but he's going to have so many devil fruits that the strain that Luffy will go through because he has to use so much hockey to combat all these other devil fruits will eventually probably just drain him, putting him on an equal level with Blackbeard, having all these other devil fruits. And that fits Blackbeard's character more than anything that anybody else believes he has already. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a great theory and that's such a great way to make Blackbeard reach the levels that we know he's going to be at eventually. And it would scream perfect, why? Because he's a schemer, he's a snake, he's somebody that survives like a cockroach. He's going to take other people's devil fruits because Mm -hmm. it means that he's going to do whatever he wants to do. And Mm -hmm. his crewmates aren't crewmates he cares about. They just have a goal that's aligned with him. Mm -hmm. And that's perfect. He said said himself that he was willing to sacrifice the two that he took to um, Amazon Lily. He was willing to sacrifice them straight away. He didn't even hesitate. He just feels like Boa said, oh, if, even if you kill me, they're going to stay stone. He didn't give a damn. Listen, I want to add something, and I hope this helps, Go. like, if you if you ever make a video on it, um, uh, Broker. Because you know how Oda works, right? A lot of times he foreshadows something. When you guys yeah. are saying this, immediately I thought Oda already, for, if this is true, Oda, in a way, kind of foreshadowed this already. With Moria. Moria relied on shadows the strength of others when he was fighting luffy at the end of it this dude started taking like every shadow mm-hmm. he could he said i'm a i'm a absorb a thousand shadows borrowing a thousand people's strength you know besides him to fight luffy you know so it's like blackbeard who kind of like not relying on other people's strength uses relies on ability strength now like the fighting luffy i can't beat him because once more i can't beat you i'm gonna ta- i'm gonna take in a thousand shadows blackbeard I can't be Luffy. I'm going to take in, like, whatever amount of abilities I have to try to fight to beat you. So, it's like, in a way, Oda could have foreshadowed this with Moria by him taking those 1,000 shots to try to fight Luffy. It's so funny that, like, you and Broker are coming up with this, like, th- these ideas. And I guarantee you, you're going to face such backlash. Because, <laughs> because, because I, face oh, a, cause I, I say the I, same I, thing. I, and people get on my I case so much. I'm Watch. I love Blackbeard. I absolutely love Blackbeard. But... I love him because this isn't beyond the pale for him. Yeah. yeah. That's why I love him. But what you, This could be a thing that he does, and I would love it. Okay, yeah, but the thing is, this doesn't match up with what you are, what you currently think to what Broker's saying. Like, what you currently think is that he's already on the level of Luffy where he's not. My opinion on Blackbeard will never be better for the story than... I'm glad you said Just, just You know what I mean? Broker, you yeah. could keep going. You feel yeah. me? But, like... It's fine. So, I... I can make it. I can make it even better. It's like people are going to say, "Well, why doesn't he just take all the devil fruits now?" I think that uh, I won't say what I think Blackbeard's origin is. That's another video I'll do with you. But um, I think the reason he doesn't do, take all the fruits straight away and just to hell with his crew is the fact that it drains his lifespan. Or every time he has an extra, there's a detriment to his body because he's a coward. If he if he thought that he could do it now with no downsides, he'd do it straight away. He wouldn't need a crew. He'd just make himself a hundred percent overpowered, take every fruit he could from every single person. But he doesn't. He uses other people. He uses his crew. He's not allied with his crew. He gives them fruit. Says, "You take this one. You take this one. You take this one." Probably knowing that in a pinch, if they're around, to go. Well, if they die, I'll just take it now if I need to. Hmm. I should, that. <clears throat> like all this actually fits Blackbeard's character because like, we always seen it before. Like it's perfect. Yeah, because we even saw a glimpse of it again with Lawrence is saying also with Whitebeard. He's going to fight Whitebeard one on one, but as soon as he got a glimpse of he might die, he said crew get him, and immediately he didn't care about like you know anything. He just wanted Whitebeard to get away from him, or he wanted Whitebeard dead because um he wanted to kill Whitebeard already, but he got scared that he got feared of his life that. He wanted his crew to attack. Blackbeard shows like, like he want he like he already showed like it was Aokiji. We don't we are not we're not Nakamo. We're just here have similar goals and different ends meets like that align with each other. But like we don't have to be family. We don't have to be any of this. We can have same objectives to achieve our goal. So now Blackbeard already established his, he cares about his crew to agree to only to achieve his goal. But once it shows that he doesn't fully care about his crew like like for instance I can't say Blackbeard's crew. And Luffy's crew are Nakama. 
Like, look how Luffy cares about his crew. Like, Luffy's willing to sacrifice so much for his crew. Blackbeard ain't doing that. He's, the he's people, sacrificing nothing. Exactly. <laughs> like, he, in a way, he kind of used, like, how he would sacrifice his crew to achieve his goal. Mm-hmm. And he shows, again, all this fits, honestly, it's, like, this theory is phenomenal because it fits Blackbeard's character. That's the whole main point. Right. People saying all this stuff, like, how black, if you look at how Blackbeard is throughout the whole story, this fits perfectly how Blackbeard was. I'm telling you, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to get so much hate. <laughs> listen, bro, <laughs> listen. Again, this is not us. This is, is what Oda put us. This is what Oda put us. Like, Blackbeard is supposed to be the opposite of Luffy. Mm. What would Luffy wouldn't do Luffy that? Luffy would never do that. Exactly. Like, Blackbeard would do it in a heartbeat. Exactly. But, uh, Broker, we do have to take other calls, but thank you so much for calling us in and, and blessing us with this theory. I, I didn't know you put this out. Yo. Yeah. This is fire. Yo, you need to make a YouTube channel, bro. Yeah. I mean that. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you, thank man. You. Thank you for calling up yeah, and, and put, putting that on the community, man. Yeah, thank you for oh, sharing. Guys, thank you, broker. Thank you, broker. Thank you for sharing. Bye. All right, bye. Have a good night. Oh yeah, but if I if I said that, <laughs> if you don't have a British if I accent. That, if I said that, yo, <laughs> you don't have a British yo, accent. Yo, they call me Baldy and Mega Mind all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we got part in chat. What up? Par? Hey, what's going on? This is Larry from that One Piece Talk. Who are you and how are you? What up, boys? My name is Devin. Can y'all hear me good? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hey, so listen, I was just wondering, so do, what do y'all think is, like, Fujitora's point in the story? Like, do y'all think he's going to get relieved of his admiral duties for all the repeated failings he's had? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the future fleet admiral of the Marines, personally. Are you going the opposite uh, route? Okay. That's, a, that's a good one, actually. I agree yeah, with that. because he's the only one that's shown, like, real humanity. And he has the strength and the wherewithal to actually lead, right? Where, like, he's willing to take blame. He's willing to do the things that other people haven't. But I think Fujitora is ultimately going to be the fleet admiral when the the current world government is toppled and, and changed. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. But, yeah. So, like, but what about Kobe? Because isn't that Kobe's... That's uh, later. That's later. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say... Kobe's later. Nar- I'm talking about... Like, like Nar- Naruto yeah, couldn't Naruto- be like Hokage immediately. Yeah, Kakashi. A bridge with Kakashi. I think okay. he is the Kakashi for that. Okay. Yeah, that, I, I agree. I could see Fujitora. Because he will be the one that I could kind of... That would possibly work with Dragon. If Dragon, you know, uh, does things right. And... Because like, also he took uh, to Luffy, you know. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I agree with Sebastian. Yeah, I actually yeah. see that. Because again... Damn, in, that's rare. Yeah. No, because Fujitora is with the people, and like that just shows that whole dragon's whole thing is for the people. So I can definitely see that. Yeah. What about you, man? Yeah, I feel like Fujitora has not taken a single W in the eyes of the world <laughs> government. I can't see a reason that they'd want to keep him around. Like he failed supremely at that. They lost the warlord, and the whole system they have there toppled. Uh, Jack got away. He was able to go back home. Uh, and then now I hear at Marizuwa, he almost wiped out a whole bunch of people there. <laughs> and then everybody, including Kuma, got out, got free. I don't see one W that Fujitora has taken that would make him be in good standing right now with the world government to keep him around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I want to bring up Garp because he rebels all the time. But Garp is like, he does achievements like him being the hero. So he kind of makes up for it. Right. He has that status. Yeah. Like, what does Fujitora have? Yeah, that's true. I mean, because they both, because Sengoku said that Garp would have been, like, you know, what was it? He would have been, like, lost his position and everything years ago, but it wasn't for his status and for his achievements and yeah. for whatever his, like, merit was that keep them, kept them. Fujito doesn't really have that because, again, he recently just joined the Marines. Mm. So, like, I could kind of see Fujito getting kicked out, but I don't know. Like, but again, why would you lose that strength, though? Like, you already, you all lost out, Kiji. trying to lose another Admiral level strength that's benefited for your army? Like, would you want to risk that? Especially what's going on right now? Like, that's kind of, that's not, to me personally, that's not a good decision. Mm-hmm. But, uh, thank you so much. For, no, go ahead. So I'll say, I didn't even think of it like that. Like, uh, they already did right, losing another big powerhouse. I mean, where, where would Fuji Square even go? I didn't think of it like that. Yeah. They could possibly make another enemy by doing that. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. But uh, thank you so much for uh, calling uh, in, man. Uh, I appreciate you. Hey, th- thank you for calling. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. get him at the end. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs>
Hey, what's going on? This is Liar from that One Piece talk. Who are you and how are you? Hey, how's it going? This is uh, Leo, aka uh, All Kage. Hey, what's hey, up, man? How's it going? How you going? What's up? Oh, you gotta mute the hey, background um, too. Just wanted to call in and say, uh, you know, I uh, appreciate you guys' hard work, man. Thanks, uh, congratulations on the 100K. Oh, thank you, thank man. You, I appreciate you. you. Appreciate you. Yeah, that's yeah. Thank you for that. So I, uh, I definitely did have a uh, um, shout out to Broker and his uh, amazing theory. Um, but yeah, Luffy is the opposite of Blackbeard in every way. And with Blackbeard taking all of the devil fruits, uh, do you think it'll mirror the Gecko Moria fight with uh, the whole crew pretty much jumping Blackbeard? Yeah, I think Lauren said that, right? You said I would mirror him. No, no, because they didn't jump um, Moria, they jumped Ors. Right. Well, yeah, with like, like Ors. Yeah, I don't think the... Um... The straw that Odo will write it that way. I think it would be Blackbeard and Luffy are gonna fight Dolo like one on one. So yeah, I think even if even if Blackbeard was to take all the Devil Fruits, I think it's still more powerful emotion or a moment for Luffy to do it alone. Yeah, but I could see him having the Straw Hats together yeah. defeat that version of Blackbeard. Okay, I that's think true. um you might get a better eh. If that's if that was the play out, I, I do think that's a possibility as well. I would rather have an all team up versus Emu if Emu was some powerful being like that to overtake the government. Okay. Versus, I, I just want Luffy. Gonna be a personally, character? I just want Luffy and Blackbeard to be a solo thing. Yeah, per, yeah, like, yeah that's yeah. just me. That that's my preferred route. Even if Blackbeard does that, what Broker said, I would still want it to be just Luffy. Because that's that's new. Because first, all Luffy's fights were solo. Like, yeah, Luffy didn't really had like he never really had his crew fight in his fights. The only one you could say was Kaido, and even then that led to a one on one. Like but, Luffy doesn't yeah. Luffy doesn't want his crew to be involved. Yeah, we all know this. Yeah, because even like just to piggyback off that with Moria, he told his crew that were a conscious. He said, "Everyone stand back. I'm about to go all out." Right, and then with Kaido. They were there, but only when Big Mom was there. When Big Mom got knocked out of there, shortly after, he even told Law, "Yo, can you take everyone down? I'm gonna fight Kaido one on one." So Luffy wants to have his one on one fight. So I don't think he's he would ask his crew to do that. Yeah, we seen it sometimes with like the, with Kuma, like uh, the pacifista Kuma, when they were uh, younger. But that's like not if because like Luffy's gonna view someone I have to beat. Yeah. Right. Once Luffy views that person that way, he's gonna fight him one on one. You know, the pacifista wasn't viewed that way, but Kaido was, every point of Luffy, this is the person that I have to fight. Like, even with, people also him a bunch of with Doflamingo. Luffy was like, no, I'm fighting Doflamingo, yeah. you know? Especially, like, if you think about it, that's the person who beat Ace. Yeah. Like, Luffy's once wholeheartedly would want to fight the person who beat Ace yeah. one-on-one. So, so so long as they ain't doing the brawly, giving people energy, <laughs> man, I think we good. Larry? Uh... No, nah, I don't think they, they'll jump Blackbeard unless he's completely overpowered and takes all their devil fruits. Uh, that includes Aokiji's. Mm. Right? Ooh, I didn't think about Aokiji. Aokiji. So, um, if Blackbeard gets to that point, so so my, 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 my idea is that Roger couldn't reach the heights of the previous Joy Boy, right? And Luffy has to surpass the previous Joy Boy who failed. In my opinion, there was always two Joy Boys. There's the Joy Boy of the Dawn, there's Joy Boy of the Dusk, right? And I think the Dawn and the Dusk stand for the D and the D Clan members' names. So I think that the opposite position was the Dusk, who was rocks during Roger's era. He could, he was strong as hell, but he couldn't reach the heights of the previous uh, Dusk Joy Boy that won against the Joy Boy of the Dawn. And that was the Joy Boy that Odahime speaks about during Fishman Island. So for me, I think that Blackbeard and Luffy, if they're going to start a new dawn or a new dusk, they need to somehow be comparable to the previous or surpass them. So I think that Blackbeard and Luffy, since they are parallels, they will have to fight one-on-one. -on -one. I think there's no way that Blackbeard becomes so overpowered that the Straw Hats overall have to fight just him. That will never happen. And I don't think Oda would ever let that happen. He would just make it Luffy versus Blackbeard, go all out, and then see what happens afterwards. And I think that's what's going to be... I think that would be the GOAT piece that we're all going to be looking at eventually. Okay. Hey, GOAT, piece? Mm -hmm. GOAT piece? GOAT piece.
<laughs> That's what it would be after that. It would be amazing. But um, <laughs> what about you, man? Real quick. Um, honestly, I think that uh, yeah, man, we we've never seen uh, the Star Hats go all out except for Ors. Um, I definitely see that uh, if he gets all those devil freaks, uh, Luffy's gonna have to rely on his crew, which he kind of does already in almost every sense. Um, the uh, yeah, man, Star Hats ain't fighting alone for this one. They're, they're, gonna, they're gonna jump. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no ones, huh? Yeah, ain't no, ain't, ain't no, ain't no ones, man. Especially if uh, we don't get a gear six. <laughs> then I'll tell you this: they better hope that Blackbeard's crew is strong enough versus Luffy's. Cause right now, Sanji and Zoro and Jinbei looking crazy. Mm -hmm, they do. Looking crazy. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Larry mentioning Sanji yeah. in that, man. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's growth, man. And you know what? He mentioned Sanji before Jimmy. He so did, bro. Did that's that. growth, man. Listen, bro. They looking crazy. <laughs> There's no, Yo, Shiryu yo. looking like a bum, but dog. Blackbeard don't even got a fish man <laughs> on his crew, man. Like, it's really just, it really is just Blackbeard and Aokiji at this point. Yeah, Blackbeard, Very, like, yeah. he looking like he got a crew like Kid, bro. Nah, <laughs> that's too far. Bro. No, it is too far. That's too far, But in terms bro. of, like, being a Yonko, like, yo, his crew don't look that crazy right now. Like, no, you didn't even mention Whitebeard. Yo, you Van, no Van Auger, love? You like Van Auger. Yo, I do, but, like, Van Auger, like, like, if we get up close, like, how much you really doing, bro? <laughs> he warping, bro. Yo. Yo, cool, bro. I mean, Jesus was out here clearing the, nah, the nah, gladiator. Nah, nah, that's, that's, that's not who he took. We, we not bring him. Burgess, yeah, bro. like, Burgess is not the one. Burgess got one shot at my Sabo. We got dudes that can give you AIDS and stuff. <laughs> Sabo ain't even, you talking AIDS. about Burgess, bro. Sabo ain't even used nothing crazy. He just used the claw. <laughs> but but that's crazy. Any, anyway, that's we, got, crazy. we gotta go. But thank you so much for the call, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> Uh, thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, thank you. Hit these super chats real quick, and then we got to go, guys. Yes, sir. Uh, we did get a $2 super chat from Stroud. It says, Marco goes on the background. <laughs> Big dog. We got another two from Cameron Childers. It says, you guys should play on a break week episode. That would be cool. I don't know how we would make that work. And then we got another Marvel five. Marco would have to put, like, a camera. And, uh, and <laughs> yeah, it would yeah. be it would be complicated. We got another five from Splash. It says to piggyback on Broker. I think Blackbeard has multiple hearts slash personalities, which is why he's able to take fruits, not just his fruits power. Um, I don't know. I think we just gotta wait on what whatever yeah. the yeah. reveal for Black, Blackbeard. Blackbeard body the same as a long arm tribe, bro. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it, like it, like. Kaido's an Oni, but nobody ever says Kaido has multiple hearts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know true. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. it's always Blackbeard though. For some reason, I gotta hype him up the most. Listen, people gravitate to their characters, man. Yeah. But thank y'all all for being with us for the hundred episodes and the hundredth episode specifically. If y'all haven't already, please like the stream. It does help with YouTube algorithm. It does. Um, I'll pass it to Larry. Actually, we did get another super chat real quick. It says hashtag. Frozen Garp uh, is mad disrespectful. He finna dog walk Bumbeard and friends. Congrats on 100 episodes from Soga King. Thank $5. You. Thank you so much. Thank Frozen you. Garp. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, thank you for spending your time with us on the 100th episode. Uh, hopefully 100 more times I get to sit down with these guys. And thank you for being a part of the community. Uh, if you haven't joined our Discord, I would suggest doing it. Um, our episodes do go on Spotify. I will be posting clips on TikTok as usual and every other social media platform. But you know, I just you know, I just want to say thank you for riding with us. Thank you, Gray, for yeah. this. This yeah. is yeah. insane. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't know what gifts are gonna be like. I, I'm assuming that this is gonna ramp it. Gifts are probably gonna come through now. Listen, I'm down for gifts, but this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. this is this is gonna be hard to top though. <laughs> Y'all send us some Twitch sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, bro, we throwing we throwing them against the wall. Really? Bro. I seen Kai Sinet's, you know. <laughs> Those sneakers are terrible looking. <laughs> we did get another six month membership to Yonko status from Rionosuke. It says no luck today. Congrats on a hundred episodes. Thank you, Rionosuke. Sorry, man, but shout out to you. You was the MVP of the DDT last week, man. Yeah. Yo, Rionosuke looks like Rembrandt from the Warriors. <laughs> Really? really? Yes, he's Are a pro see? at everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really, really, okay. Yes. All right. Anyway, we gotta go. Mars gonna kick us out. So, <laughs> listen, guys. My name is Larry Lawrence Lido Sam, and it's that one piece talk. Jada. <laughs>